coming up today on This Guy's Garage. That the evidence you shall give on this examination shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes. You've said that your role is a security expert for the company. Um, which information do you think was sent to the RCMP? Would it be information about uh, forged resumes by your company, uh, involvement in uh, bait-and-switch procurement, uh, as outlined by the procurement ombudsman, um, or uh, bid rigging? Which, what's the information that you believe has been forwarded to the RCMP? You know, you're one of the two principals, and you haven't even read the reports. That's correct. How, how can you dispute the findings of the reports if you haven't read them? Um, are you in a partnership with Firth, or are you a director in a company registered either through the Canada Corporations Act or the Ontario Corporations Act? What is it? We are partners. Do you have a partnership agreement? Yes or no? Just, just can I confirm with a, my lawyer for one second, please? I would suggest, sir, that you read the Auditor General's report before you actually dispute uh, what's in it. I've known Christian Burst since 2007. We've been a business partner since 2015. He's an honest, trustworthy, hardworking man and a parent. I have no doubt that he's done nothing wrong. I'm confident all independent investigation will establish that. Were, were you reading what you just said, sir, or were you speaking from the heart? Numbered company. What is it? Pardon me? Yes. You have a numbered company. Uh, what is the company? I don't see how that's relevant. Well, first of all, it's relevant because I've asked. It's uh, also important that we have an understanding of your business dealings. And um, I've asked the question, and you're obligated to answer it. The numbered company, sir. Uh, the number company owns my shares. Christian Firth really is the sole public face of Government of Canada strategies. No. Um, are you a public face? Uh, I might be now. <laughs> you probably are. This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. With a gavel and all. Welcome to meeting 109 of the House of Commons Standing Committee on Government Operations and Estimates. Pursuant to Standing Order 1083C, to the motion adopted by the committee on Monday, October 17, 2022, the committee is meeting to consider matters related to the ArriveCan application. As always, a reminder not to have your headphones next to the microphone. That's because of feedback and potential injury to our very valued interpreters. Um, just uh, quickly before we start, uh, like yesterday, um, Mr. Anthony's uh, lawyer, Mr. Brent Timmons, will be uh, present with his client, but he is not a witness and thus he may not address the committee. Uh, the council may be on Zoom call with the, witness or with the witness and they may speak directly to their clients, but not to the committee or committee members. I would note for committee members that they should only question the witness and not speak to or ask questions of the lawyer who is not appearing as a witness. Mr. Anthony, if you do require uh, time to speak to uh, your lawyer, uh, keep your camera on, but just uh, mute yourself and you can just indicate that you will be conferring with him. That's fine. Um, my intent, like yesterday, uh, we will do a 10-minute uh, suspension after the first two rounds, one hour about, and then after that, after the second hour, we will do five-minute uh, suspension. And also my intent as of yesterday is to have our clerk swear in the witness if the committee is fine with that, and we'll have our clerk go ahead with that. Great, uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, email this morning. Uh, you have the choice between either a oath or solemn affirmation. Uh, please let me know which one you'd like to proceed with. An oath, please. Great. I'll, uh, I'll read the, uh, the text to you, sir, and you may respond. 
Do you swear that the evidence you shall give on this examination shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. Barrett? Uh, Is there something or... Yes, sir. Uh, before, uh, before we proceed... Um, Yesterday at the end of the meeting, uh, it was clear that there was an undertaking by the witness to provide documents before 9 a.m. this morning. Um, Mr. Firth had committed to provide us names of who he negotiated with CBSA to write his own contract and the names of government officials who provided the glowing endorsements on his website that he had first undertaken to provide the committee 16 months ago. Uh, I'm wondering if you can update the committee on, uh, on what's been received and when that will be circulated. Uh, yes, I've received uh, maybe about one-third, 25% of the promised information. The clerk has received it. It is going to translation, so hopefully uh, perhaps tomorrow or the day after. The balance of the information promised uh, by 9 a.m. has not. We have a promise from Mr. Firth that the balance will be sent at another email or separate email, but we haven't released or received it yet. When we do, um, it will be translated and forwarded to the committee. And actually, on that point, I want to bring up just something I promised to get back to uh, the committee yesterday. It was regarding um, just um, questions put toward uh, the previous witness that were not answered. I want to read just kind of a note directly from um, our law clerk. Um, Quote, I understand one of the reasons given by the witness for not providing certain answers was that the matter was potentially related to an RCMP investigation. It is up to the committee to decide whether a question should be put to the witness and whether the potential for an actual police investigation is sufficient reason for not answering the question. Uh, it's ultimately up to the committee to decide. As mentioned in the House of Commons procedure and practice, a committee can report to the House a situation where a witness refuses to answer its question. So basically, it is up to the committee to decide whether that is a relevant reason not to answer and not for anyone else. So, so just, Chair, on that, uh, if I may, um, so information that was asked to the witness yesterday, um, you know, the, the uh, for example, the, the testimonials, um, who provided those testimonials, are you able to tell us if that information has been furnished, uh, uh, even if you can't circulate it? No, I can't provide this specific information because it hasn't been translated yet. So you're not able to tell us who was at the table? Let me double when check with the clerk, but I don't think GC I Strategies negotiated their own contract? You can't. I can't release specifics, just that probably about 75% of it has not been received yet. Understood. Okay. Uh, we are going to go ahead. If you're finished, Mr. Barrett, Mr. Anthony, I will give you the floor for about five minutes for your opening statement, please, sir. Go ahead. This is my second time before the committee, and as you are aware, I've been compelled to testify here today. However, I have always been willing to answer questions from the committee. I understand I have been called to appear to answer questions pertaining to the Arrive Can study. I will answer all questions for which I have the knowledge to answer as best I can. Please understand that my inability to respond should not be misinterpreted as me not answering the question. I was simply not involved in our federal government contracting processes with Canada Border Services, Canadian Digital Services, Public Health Agency, or Public Health Canada. I have no contacts or relationships within those departments. I have no contact with any clients involved with those departments or contracts other than security for resources. This has been a difficult time for me and my company. My family has also had our personal privacy invaded with images, sorry, images and the address of our home published across the media. We have been suspended from all government contracts and our subcontractors are not able to work under these existing contracts. <laughs> my private sector work has dwindled to nothing. This will have an irreparable impact on me and my family's futures. My career I spent 20 years building has been ruined. What? 
Aside from the obvious reasons of not wanting to be isolated from one another during our testimony, it's also true that we requested to be in testimony together as Mr. Firth handled all projects related to COVID and pandemic response. So I have very little to offer as insight into this committee's current work. I was not involved in any of the contracting processes for these projects. My involvement is limited to acting as Chief Security Officer. As CSO, I was responsible for working with resources to obtain required documentation to file their security clearances. This includes getting their fingerprinting and document control numbers completed, setting up each of the resources portals in the OLIS system and helping them through the process to have their background history checked on. Once submitted, I would verify the information and submit it. For each successful security, uh, security clearance, I would receive a briefing form, which I would pass along to the resource and notify Mr. Firth confirming their eligibility for work. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We'll start with uh, Mr. Barrett, please, for six minutes. Go ahead, Mr. Barrett. Sir, I see that you're in the same uh, lawyer's boardroom as your partner was yesterday. You're with the same legal counsel, is that correct? Correct. Are you uh, able to ask your lawyer at what time Mr. Firth will fulfill his promise to this committee to have tabled 100% of the information that we requested by 9 a.m., a time that he agreed to? Can you, can you tell us, uh, maybe confer with your lawyer and get us that answer? I'm not going to discuss my discussions with my lawyer. At what time will the information that has been requested by a partner of your company be furnished to this committee? I'm, I'm not aware. I, I don't know. You, you don't know. Well, some of that information was requested uh, 16 months ago. And there was an undertaking made then. And yesterday, I told your partner I didn't believe him that he would provide it this morning. And uh, and he said that yes. that, that was, uh, um, you know, uh, of course he'd provide it. That wasn't the case. Uh, but he proved me uh, right. Um, your partner yesterday um, also said that everybody was lying, except for him and you. Said that the Auditor General was lying. The Procurement Ombudsman, the Globe and Mail, the National Post... Even the CBC, um, Global News, all of us. So he offered no proof to that effect. And while we did offer proof that he lied to this committee, like I just did, uh, when uh, in, in terms of proof, uh, by your partner not having furnished this committee with the evidence that, that he undertook to by 9 a.m., um, do you agree with Mr. Firth that the Auditor General's report is incorrect? I would re refer to his testimony in regards to the numbers that we were able to supply to the Auditor General. So was the Auditor General's report correct or incorrect in your assessment? Incorrect. So the Auditor General of Canada is wrong and you are right. That's your contention today. Yes. If you had the opportunity to see the testimony of your partner yesterday, you'd see why I find that incredibly hard to believe. Um, because, uh, you know, frankly, um, it hasn't been uh, credible, your, your uh, company's testimony to our committee. Last week, government officials announced that files concerning your company, GC Strategies, role and involvement in Justin Trudeau's $60 million arrive scam have been sent to the RCMP. Now, you've said that your role is a security expert for the company. Um, which information do you think was sent to the RCMP? Would it be information about uh, forged resumes by your company, uh, involvement in uh, bait-and-switch procurement, uh, as outlined by the procurement ombudsman, um, or uh, bid rigging? Which What's the information that you believe has been forwarded to the RCMP? Um, I have no idea. 
Your partner, Mr. Firth, refused to say who provided testimonials on your website 16 months ago and uh, has failed to provide them this morning. Uh, is your testimony this morning that you are also unaware who provided the testimonials on your website? Yes, I am unaware of who provided the testimonies. So, so you don't know who the chief information officer was of Canada who, who provided... There's, there's only six quotes on your website, and you're saying that you don't know who the chief data officer for the public sector was who provided that. Yes, that's correct. You're saying you don't know who the chief data officer for Canada was who provided a, an endorsement of your company on your website. Yes, that's correct. You're saying that the vice president of a major crown corporation, who that individual is, is a mystery to you. That's correct. And the senior executive from the government of Canada, you don't know who that was. That's correct. So though your partner appeared at this committee 16 months ago and was asked that very same question, it didn't, it didn't raise any curiosity in you and it never came up in conversation. Will you say today that you never discussed that committee appearance and the questions that were asked with your partner? Is that your testimony today under oath? Can, can you clarify the question on, on what? The, you should actually clarify the question for me. The question is, when your partner came here 16 months ago and was asked, and was asked that question and said he was going to come back and provide the information to the committee and appeared before a parliamentary committee uh, and um, I would say it didn't go very well. Um, is your testimony today that you and he didn't discuss the information that he said he was going to provide back to the committee? We discuss files and contracts generally but not specifics. Are the Are the Endorsements on your website fake, like the resumes that were provided in order to win government contracts? I have no idea. It, it seems, sir, that this is just part of the scam that's being perpetrated by your company on the government of Canada and Canadian taxpayers. We'll have more questions for you. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Souza, please go ahead for six minutes, sir. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Anthony, have, have you been approached by any members of this committee before all of this or any other committee within any elected officials? Has everybody approached you or Christian Firth separately outside of committee? No, they have not. And in your discussions uh, and deliberations since this investigation has been ongoing, have you had discussions with the Auditor General? No, I have not. Have you had discussions with the Ombudsman? No, I have not. Have you had any discussions with uh, uh, the ministers or members of, uh, uh, of Cabinet on this matter? Not at all. In your deliberations and in, and in your uh, processes over the years, you've been how, how long have you been part of GC Strategies? Uh... Um, I've been there since 2015 when we started the company. Were you a partner in previous companies and operations with, uh, with uh, this procurement process? I worked for previous companies, but I was not partners in those companies. Who did you work for prior to GC Strategies? I worked for Veritac and a company called I4C Consulting. So you worked with Christian Firth at Veritac? That's where I met him, yes. Yeah. And then you both together became partners and purchased Cordell? Yes, I left Veritech around 2010, went to a different company, and then we met up again in 2015. So you have an equity stake in GC Strategies? Absolutely. So you're, you're a principal, just you and, and Kirsten Firth is GC that's, Strategies? That's correct. 
um, and yet you have not been involved in sourcing contracts. It's all been Christian Firth, or have you been engaged in sourcing opportunities? I'm engaged in, sor in sourcing opportunities. I work in the private sector and different federal government accounts. We don't work in the same, same accounts. So you have separate accounts than Christian Firth? Yes. So are you saying that when the contracts were f uh, established for Arrive Can and, and so forth, you weren't part of those discussions? I was not part of those discussions. But you are the chief security officer, so it is part of your responsibility to vet the subcontractors, as I, I understand. Is that what, yes, what you're saying? That, yes, that's correct. So any, any resource that worked under those contracts, I would have processed their security clearances. So in order for them to be eligible to work on these contracts, they had to go through you? Correct. So did you have contact with individuals uh, in government in regards to these contracts? No. In terms of your security clearance? No, I just had, co just had contacts with the resources. So who are the resources in government that you would have had contact with? Oh, I, I didn't have contacts within the government for their resources. When I say resources, I mean our contractors. So you, you're, you're, you have a contract, Christian Firth is a source of contract in government, and a substantive one at that, and your involvement was, hey, we just make sure that subcontractors are eligible. Is that what you're saying? That's and exactly you, what I'm saying. And you had no engagement with civil service at all? Not with those contracts, no. Well, but you do have uh, contacts and relationships with other civil servants in other contracts. Yes, I have. I have contracts that are not related to this. This study. This. This. Do you have ongoing contracts right now? No, we have. We have no contracts whatsoever. And uh, what was the last contract you had with uh, the government of Canada that you can uh, well, recall? They were all suspended on, I believe it was February the 14th. That was the last contract we had. We let everybody that we had, that we let them know that they were no longer able to work under those contracts. And how many people were employed or contracted through this process that you worked with? How many contractors, subcontractors did you deal with? Uh, since 2015, around over 200. So you had 200 individuals that were contracted on your behalf to do work for the government of Canada through the procurement process. No, some of those 200 people were in the private sector. Well, they're all subcontractors. So they're all private sector, right? So you are the contractor, so you've done a deal, and now you've sourced the, that, that opportunity out to a number of other skill sets to do the work. And you had about 200 of them involved at any, going to, at any given time? Yes. Um, there's a dispute in terms of the amount. The, the previous uh, question just came to you about... Uh, the $19 million that's being, that was put forward by the Auditor General is being sourced by GC Strategies. And uh, Christian Firth has said it's only 11.1, 11.2 million. Can you verify that? They were his contracts. So he would be reporting on those. Thanks, Mr. Sousa. We're right at six minutes. Uh, Mrs. Vignola, please go ahead. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Anthony, thank you for being here with us today. It's definitely not easy. We, of course, have many questions, and I'm seeking clarifications to understand how the process works in general. And the objective is to improve the process so that we don't find ourselves in situations like this one. You. Mr. Anthony, your Mr. Anthony, your hand is up online. Is everything okay? Yeah, I just missed the first little bit. Yeah. My translation wasn't working. Um, are you okay if we? I just missed the first. Are you okay if we just re restart? Thanks. We'll restart the clock. Thanks, Mrs. McNoll. Donc, Monsieur, uh, Mr. Anthony, I thank you for being here with us today. 
it's not easy to come and answer all these questions. I am trying to better understand the process so that we can improve it and make sure that the taxes of Canadians are well used and spent. You told us a bit about your role within GC strategies. You are responsible for security and you have no ties with the contracts. with the members of government. You have no ties with members of government and public servants, and you receive 50% of the income. Did I understand you well? Um, I have no relationships with the with as per my testimony with the with the departments that, that I mentioned, but I, I do have that is also what I was saying, that you don't have any relationships, but do you receive 50% of the revenue? Yes, at GC Strategies, we share in profits. Thank you. It must be disturbing to be here in the committee with us because, well, stop me if I'm mistaken, you are realizing a dream to move from an income earner to that of one who owns a company, and that's commendable because when you own a company, you can receive huge sums of money, and that is nice. Do you own any other companies than GC strategies, maybe other companies with numbers? Yes, I do have a, a numbered company. Est-ce que ces compagnies numéro là font également affaire avec le gouvernement? Do these numbered companies also do business with the government of Canada, or do they deal with other entities completely? Uh, other entities completely. Okay. Um, je vais vous poser la même question que j'ai posée à Monsieur. I'll put the same question I put to Mr. Firth yesterday. We learned that a, an accounting firm has interest in tax havens. Do your company also have any interest in tax havens? No. Excellent. No. Good. Excellent. Thank you. I would like to come back to the purchase of Corridor. I believe that is the starting point for the achievement of your big dream, the dream you had to own your own company. At the time, together with Mr. Firth and Mr. White, at the time you bought Corridor, how many employees were working at that company? Uh, they had no employees at that company. And before you bought over the company, did you have any interest in that company? Had you worked with the company before? I worked with the company. The owner of the company was a, actually a... a consultant of mine when I was at I4C Consulting. Okay. Pourquoi est-ce que vous... Why did you buy Corridor? Quel était l'avantage? What was the advantage for you to purchase Corridor? They have no patent, no intellectual property, and you're saying that they had no employees. What's the advantage? that Corridor had security clearance and by purchasing Corridor and by setting up GC strategies, the security clearance will be transferred over. Yes, and we will get to the corporate history of the company as well. Okay. Um, donc, en achetant Corridor, by buying Corridor and setting up GC strategies, you were aware 
that there will be interesting opportunities with the government of Canada. Now, talking about information technology, considering that there have been significant cutbacks for public servants working in this domain in previous years, when were you aware that there's go there was going to be a window of opportunity in information technology? Could you tell us when you realized that it was going to be quite profitable to buy Corridor and then set up your own company? Uh, I guess I could say I realized it when I got into the business in 2005. Merci. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Please, for six minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Anthony, I, I'm joining this study uh, partway through, and so there's some testimony I haven't been privy to. Um, however, the, the picture that, that seems to be coming to light is one of a small company with two principals that is uh, getting lucrative government contracts, uh, is out there finding private sector contractors and uh, assembling them to work on this IT project for the, for the government. Um, it, your partner <clears throat> indicated it was around an $11 million contract for which your firm received a $2.5 million commission. And all of that, you know, could seem above board, except some of those things are not as they seem. So, for instance, in some cases, your, your company isn't actually doing the recruiting. Uh, in some cases, CBSA was doing the recruiting, finding the resources, and then telling them to work through you. And more alarming is the fact that in, in quite a few cases, we have um, essentially your company is writing the requirements of the contract and then somehow getting the contract. Uh, also exaggerating the resumes of the resources that are going to work on the contract, at, at least in one case, without the knowledge of those resources. And so this is a picture that is very concerning to the public, obviously. Can, can you see why the picture that has been painted painted as a result of these hearings is of concern to the Canadian public? I can only talk about my contracts. So, as a, I assume you're a director of GC Strategies, is that a fair characterization? Well, I, I would be the vice president. Vice president, okay. And, and you have shares in the company? How, it, what is your uh, capacity as an owner of the company? We, we are 50-50 owners. Okay. And what is your fiduciary responsibility as an owner of the company? Is it only for your contracts or is it for the entire corporate entity? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. You're a half owner of a company that does millions of dollars in government contracts and you don't know what your fiduciary responsibility is to the corporate entity? No, I, I, I have no knowledge of that. Well, I, I, I find that somewhat astounding. Um, are, have you read the Auditor General's report? I have not read it, no. The Auditor General of Canada has audited contracts that the company you're a 50% a owner of has, has undertaken, and you haven't read the report. Have you read the Office of the Procurement Ombud report? No, I have not. So as a director of this company and a 50% and shareholder, uh, your company has been brought into the public limelight for... Uh, potential uh, serious misconduct. Your, your contracts with the government have been suspended, all of the contracts. Um, and this is because of reports that have been written by uh, some of the, the main um, watchdogs uh, who work on behalf of the Canadian public. And they've raised major red flags about your corporate practices uh, of a company that, that you're, you know, you're one of the two principals and you haven't even read the reports. 
That's correct. How, how can you dispute the findings of the reports if you haven't read them? Um, I, 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 I agree with the numbers that Christian sent for, for our, as he gave in testimony yesterday. So you're telling me that your, uh, the statements that you've made about the auditor's general reports are not based on reading the report. It's based on what Christian told you. It's based on testimony given at these committees. I, I just, I just find this astounding that someone who works at your level and is the 50% owner of a company that, uh, has been scrutinized and brought into disrepute by the auditor general and the, uh, office of the procurement ombudsman that now is being looked into by the RCMP and soon the public sector integrity commissioner is going to be looking through your business dealings and you haven't read any of these reports. Like this is, I, I would, <laughs> if I was an investor in this company, I would be very, very concerned. If I was a contractor for this company, I would be very concerned. And if I was the government contracting your company, I would be incredibly concerned that you're not even following the bouncing ball when it comes to these uh, major allegations against your, your company's business practices. Can you see why that would be a concern? Sure. Mr. Anthony, did you ever attend any of the hospitality events for government officials that Mr. Firth referenced in the last meeting? No, I have not. And have you ever uh, delivered gifts to government officials? No, I have not. Mr. Chair, I'm going to hand the floor back to you and I'll, I'll begin my line of questioning again next round. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Backrack. Uh, Mr. Brock, go ahead, please, for five. Thank you, Chair. Um, like my NDP colleague, um, sir, I, I'm completely astonished of your complete lack of preparation for this committee hearing. You start off in your opening statement talking about how you and Mr. Firth have been wrongly portrayed in media, newsprint, committee hearings, MP, word on the street. You talk about the financial stresses, the emotional stresses, and you don't have any concrete answer to clearly relevant questions. You very proudly stated that you stand behind the words of your partner, Mr. Firth, that the Auditor General's report was completely inaccurate. How on earth could you have prepared any less for this hearing by not taking 20 minutes to read the actual report? I find it absolutely astonishing, sir, and quite frankly, it reflects very poorly on your credibility. So I want to ask you some questions for clarification. Are you in a partnership with Firth, or are you a director in a company registered either through the Canada Corporations Act or the Ontario Corporations Act? What is it? We are partners. Do you have a partnership agreement? Yes or no? Just, just can I confirm with a, my lawyer for one second, please? Yep, go ahead, just uh, mute yourself. <laughs> Sorry. We are a corporation and I am a shareholder for that corporation. So you're not, in a, a, you're not in a partnership. You may refer to yourself as partners, but you don't have a legal partnership agreement, correct? That's correct. Okay. So you are a director. And you, under, and you didn't understand that directors have joint and several liability, meaning that you're both responsible for consequences of the acts of directors. You're aware of that now, sir? Um, I don't believe that to be true. Okay. Well, you can check with your lawyer on that. Um, Mr. Firth has 
put it out there in real evidence that he has committed, not on one occasion, but on multiple occasions, acts of forgery that would be defined as a criminal act under the Criminal Code of Canada. He claims it was a mistake. And as a former prosecutor, pretty much every single accused that I dealt with in the last 20 plus years always claimed they made mistakes. Do you understand, sir, ignorance of the law is no excuse? Do you understand that? Sure. So if Mr. Firth was willing to do that, but this is, I'm talking about the Bottler uh, complaint, on at least four or five occasions without consulting, without getting approval, without getting clearance from Bottler to change the actual resume to ensure they received a contract, it really begs the question, how many times has your 50-50 partner, director, Mr. Firth, done that on other contracts? Do you have an answer to that? I don't have I don't have an I don't have any knowledge of that. No, because what he does is up to him and what you do is up to you, correct? Is that your understanding? Yes. I see. Now, who was responsible for your web design on your website <laughs> that probably fraudulently identifies several key government employees boasting about the value uh, of, your, uh, of your company. Who was responsible for creating this web design? Um, I'm not sure. I believe that we did hire out someone to, to build our website for us in 2015. Okay. Who was the company? Um... I, I don't have that information in front of me right now. You'll supply the information to us? Yeah, I can check my records. Okay, and in addition to Mr. Barrett's questions to you, you will also provide to me by, I'm going to give you seven days to do this, sir, the names of all the government employees that are referenced uh, in your website boasting about your particular company. You'll do that because you didn't have the answer as to who they were, but in seven days you'll provide me with that information, won't you? We can try and find that information for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Uh, Mr. Baines, please, for five, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Yes. Um, yesterday, Mr. Firth mentioned that he began working in uh, on government contracts within another company um, in 2007. Were you? Is that you indicated you met met him working uh, within another company, and but you said. Uh, up until 2010. When did you begin? I started at Veritec in 2005. So Mr. Firth joined Veritec in what year? 2007. So you were there prior to him? Yes. And over this time, um, uh, you, you ultimately uh, developed relationships with uh, public officials uh, who also have been working there uh, for quite some time. And and at any time, did you meet with uh, Mr. McDonald? No, no McDonald. I did not. Okay. Um, uh, you, you, you talked about your only role in previous questions today was to verify uh, subcontractors that were working. Um, you know, what, what's that process? What did you do to verify th those subcontractors? Well, for the security process, when once we identify a resource need, we'll make sure they, they're el eligible to get a government security clearance. They had to get their fingerprints taken. They need a document security number. It's a 25 digit code that's done from any of your like commissioners, any fingerprinting with the RCMP. 
Um, once they have that and that number is verified, they send it to me. They give me their personal information. I entered it into the OLIS portal. They Then it's resent to the resource. The resource completes their family history. It gets sent back to me. I review the that make sure everything's processed and submit it. So you simply did your work through a portal. You didn't exchange um, any of this information with any public officials. You, you indicated you you were removed from having dealings with uh, specific people. You did. You you're strictly operating in this in your in role. that. Yeah, in that capacity, I'm only dealing with the OLUS portal. I have no contact with any officials. Okay, so in your role to verify and, and do these security processes at any time, um, do you verify like the the people working um, what their qualifications are, because um, we've heard from Mr. Firth himself personally stating that uh, he um, he inflated um, uh, information on resumes um, in order to because he had a strong understanding over the years of what uh, was required to what requirements were needed to be met in order to gain uh, certain contracts. It was all, almost like a, uh, a skill developed over time to obtain a government contracts. He knew how to do that and uh, would know what, say, keywords, etc. needed to be placed into the resumes. He indicated in prior testimony that that's something he did do he admitted to it so are you aware of that or, or was, was it your job to verify these things on uh things of that nature or people's skills uh, whether they were real or not um during these security processes that is not a part of the security process the security process is basically an individual's personal history and family Isn't history. individual's personal history to know what skill set they have and what in what role they would be doing within government? Not within the PSBC government security clearance process. It's simply more of a um, public safety or, or um, criminal record checks, these sort of things? It's a criminal record check, and I believe you'd have to ask the RCMP on what their process is, but I believe it's a full family history check as well. No, but that's your process. I'm talking about your process. So yeah, my process. Yeah, so you're, so the, you're simply submitting these people's information to other public safety agencies to ensure that they are uh, uh, good citizens, they're not... Uh, um, they don't have any criminal records, and that's it. That's it. So you're you're not verifying uh, who these subcontractors are with respect to what skill set they have, and they're going to go work on uh, government contracts um, where um, uh, you know important information, uh, sensitive information is shared. No, I don't. I don't verify that myself. Okay, so your what was your question, role, Mr. Baines? How much time? Sorry. If you have a quick question, please go ahead. That's all. I'll I'll, I'll save it for the next time. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Baines. Uh, Mrs. Vignola for two and a half, please. Mr. Anthony, I'll continue. In two thousand and five, you started working for Veritag. Later on, still at Veritag, you met Mr. Firth. Mr. White, Mr. Caleb White, did you also meet him at Veritag? Yes. Um, et Monsieur and Mr. Colin Wood as well? Yes. Okay, Mr. Colin Wood. Mr. Colin Wood set up Coradix and for whom David Yao 
had been director very well. Is Caleb White still a partner at GC Strategies? No, Caleb is not a partner at GC Strategies. Why did he leave GC Strategies? Uh, that's a question you'd have to ask him. Oh, okay, fait qu'il est parti sans vous en... So he left without telling you why he just left and saying it's okay, I'm going to leave aside millions of dollars of contracts behind because in according to the Business Journal of Ottawa, you are listed as one of the four most important companies with a growth rate of more than 600% in four years. So you think Mr. White just left without telling you why? No, Caleb was fully upfront with us and let us know why he was leaving. He wanted to go and pursue other options. Oh, okay. No. Very well. So he wanted to check out other options. Mr. West Dravis. Was he involved with GC Strategies before? He was an employee. Okay, and Mr. J uh, Jarvis. And Mr. Jarvis was also in BDO when BDO uh, absorbed uh, Lesage, if I understand. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Le même Monsieur Jarvis. The same Mr. Jarvis, who had been a manager at Lexor, the company Lexor, and BDO, which subsequently purchased Lexor, the same company. Um, uh, what, what, is the, what, what is the question? La question est... The question is, Mr. Jarvis was an employee at GC Strategies. Is the same Mr. Jarvis who had worked at Lexor. Lexor was purchased by BDO, and Mr. Jarvis now works with BDO. Am I correct? Yes, Wes Jarvis did work as an employee for your GC Strategies. Thank you very much. Mr. Backtrack, please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Anthony, did you sign the $13.9 million contract with CBSA? No, I did not. So you signed contracts for your projects and Mr. Firth signs, proje signs contracts for his projects? Is that roughly how it works? That's correct. As chief security officer, are you responsible for the security clearance for not only the resources that you compile, but also GC strategies itself? Yes. And at the time that the $13.9 million contract with CBSA was signed by Mr. Firth, were you aware that there was a document safeguarding uh, capability requirement associated with that contract? No, I was not. How do you, as chief security officer, how do you review the security requirements of contracts that Mr. Firth negotiates with the government? Or do you? I do the I do once we get a contract awarded we see what is required if we need to add any additional security. And did you review the 13.9 million dollar contract for security requirements after Mr. Firth signed it? After it was awarded it, that document security clearance was not required. Uh I don't believe that was the case. I think that the requirement was removed something like 14 months after the document was signed. I assume that work was already taking place on the contract at that point. Is that not correct? Uh, I believe work was ongoing on that project, but I don't think it required document safeguarding. But the contract itself, this is what the Auditor General and the Procurement Ombud have both found, that the contract itself, in order to sign the contract, GC Strategies needed to have the specific security clearance. You are the Chief Security Officer 
but you were not aware of that requirement prior to Mr. Firth signing the contract and you did not review the contract for security requirements prior to him signing it. Is that correct? That's correct. What part of chief security officer involves the security part? I'm just like, I'm, I'm having trouble struggling with this question of how you actually exercise that role with regard to the contracts that your company signs. Um, and I'm also unclear why you and Mr. Firth have don't have separate companies because it seems like uh, you're not actually working on the same projects and nor are you actually exercising your role as security officer when it comes to the work that Mr. Firth is bringing into the company. Help me understand how this, how this all works. Uh, if you're able to offer up a, a, a short answer, Mr. Anthony. Uh, the document safeguarding was not required for that, for that contract. Thanks very much, Mr. Bertold. Please go ahead, sir. Welcome to OGO, or welcome back to OGO. Merci, uh, Mr. Thank you, Chair. Just to be sure that I understood you well, a while ago you said you had not read the auditor. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Bertold's sound is very poor. The int interpretation will improve. Come on. Oui. Go ahead. Donc, uh, Mr. Anthony, you said that you had Mr. Anthony, you said you had not read the AG's report, a report that was devastating for GC strategies. And because of that re report, GC strategies no longer has a contract with the government of Canada. And you want us to believe that? Yes. Monsieur Anthony, c'est. Mr. Anthony, that's uh, very surprising. As. The person in charge of security, did you take part in falsifying the CVs of subcontractors of GC strategies to make sure that GC strategies obtain contracts from the federal government? Uh, can you clarify the question? Did you participate in falsifying or forging the CVs of subcontractors to help GC strategies obtain contracts from the federal government, yes or no? No. Reconnaissez-vous que votre Do you admit that your associate did so? No. Alors comment se fait So how come the CVs of subcontractors of GC strategies are not a true reflection of the CVs of subcontractors? And that's why we're undermining your security. It's undermining your security. The questions were put to you about the cottage on documents, meetings with public servants. I have I have no knowledge of that. Est-ce que vous estimez? Do you feel that your associate or partner told us the entire truth? Were you present with him in the room where you are right now? Can you ask the question again, please? Est-ce que... Do you feel that your partner told us the whole truth yesterday? Yes or no? Yes. Est-ce que vous étiez... Were you present with him in the room where you are right now when he was giving his testimony? No, I was not. Est-ce que vous avez regardé le... Did you watch your partner's testimony? I watch pieces of his testimony. Alors, comment pouvez-vous affirmer? How can you say with all certainty that he did not lie? Once again, it's very difficult. Your partner told, called everyone a liar, and now I find your testimony so far very unbelievable. Did you receive contracts from the government since 2015? What was the amount of the contracts you received since 2015 from the federal government? Uh, how many contracts have we received since 2015? Is that the how question? How much money did you receive personally? Combien d'argent avez-vous reçu personnellement? How much money have you personally received from the federal government? I don't have those figures with me right now. Est-ce que vous vous engagez à les fournir au comité? 
Can you commit to send us uh, that, to send the information to the committee, Mr. Anthony? Sure. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire en même temps? Could you also tell us how much money you personally withdrew from the contract, the Arrive Can contract? I, I can look, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Est-ce que vous engagez à fournir ces Can you also provide the committee with those amounts as well? Because, Mr. Anthony, you know the committee can demand that you produce them. We could oblige you to provide all that information. Will you willingly commit to send that information to the committee? I'm... Can someone check my translation? I'm getting some serious echo here. I can't. It's overlap. I'm hearing from the minister and then my translator. I can't quite pick it out. Okay. okay. Well, we actually are out of time uh, for Mr. Bertold. Our Bertold. Maybe what we'll do. Um, actually, we have Mr. Jouari next. Uh, Mr. Mr. Be, point of order, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. So, yes. Uh, Il semble qu'il y a eu beaucoup de problèmes. It would appear that there were lots of problems with interpretation. The witness had difficulty answering my questions in French, so I think that it's better for me to have additional time to ask my questions. Yeah, the, the five-minute mark, though. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, I know, but there was a lot of problem for the translation, and it's I, I, unfair I account, for I accounted, No, I accounted for yeah, that. I reset your clock to five to the very beginning. You Thank were twenty you. seconds, twenty six seconds in when we had to interrupt. I set it back to zero, so you did have your Thank full you. five minutes. I'm afraid um, we're going to get to Mr. Jouari, Then we will have our ten minute suspension, and I will get the uh, the clerk um, and the IT folks to look at to discuss with Mr. Anthony the um, any other translation issues. But we will get it fixed. Uh, Mr. Jouari, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, I think that's the it's an issue. It's on his end. Jouari? Uh, you're on mute, sir. In trouble now with Mr. Jouari. So, why don't we do our 10 minute suspension right now and we'll get the audio and everything fixed and we'll start back with uh, Mr. Jouari. Patience, I'm glad we have you back speaking. Go ahead for uh, five minutes, please, Mr. Shawari. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Anthony, as the Chief uh, Security Officer of a uh, Canadian corporation, which you hold 50% share, you told us that you also share into the profit of the corporation. Uh, am I right to understand that? Yes. Okay. Mr. Fritz yesterday um, indicated to us that the net the net revenue from the $11.2 million that was granted to GC strategy, um, uh, he, uh, the, this GC strategy has earned $2.5 million. Do you share, uh, based, on, um, based on that, uh, $1.25 million of that $2.5 million, sir? Yes, we share in the profits of GC Strategies. So I assume indirectly you're saying that you 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 have benefited from 1.25 million dollars net on that. So uh, can you explain to me how you share the profit? However, when it comes to the risk associated with that, or with any type of uh, inclusion, uh, you 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 are very comfortable saying, as a chief security officer, I do the check on the resources, which I understand based on Mr. Fertz. Yesterday, testimony was over 30 um, uh, consultant as it relates to ArriveCan, that you must have processed their security background, uh, yet you do not know anything about the project, you do not know anything about uh, uh, you know document tracking, and the only thing that you've made a comment is that the documents uh, um, Safeguarding was not a, a request. Can you can you can you explain to me how you're comfortable taking 1.25 million, but you are also very comfortable washing your hands off from anything that has to do with arrive can? Um, I can only speak about my contracts. Okay, so I, I take it that you are comfortable with. 
taking 1.25, but you're not comfortable talking about other contracts. Okay, so well, let's talk about your contracts then. You said you have contracts uh, for private sector, and you also have different contracts. Uh, you have public sector contracts for different accounts. Can you give me a breakdown of how many uh, of your total uh, accounts that's under your supervision? How many of them are private? How many of them are government related? I would say it's 60 40 so private six, sector. 60% private sector and 40% public. Any of those private uh, contracts that you have been securing work directly or indirectly with the other 40% in the government? Um, in some occasions, yes. Uh, or some occasion being 80%, being 40%, being 10%, being 1%? Uh, 10%. 10%. Okay. So can you tell me what departments, aside from uh, the, the accounts that Mr. Furt's holding, you are holding uh, visa, uh, in, within the government of Canada? Which department uh, do you have a relationship with? We don't hold any contracts with the government of Canada at the moment. Can you tell me what contracts you held before that as part of that 40%? Uh, sh sure, I can. I could get that information to you. Uh, so I'm. I'm sure you've been. You've been since 2015. Can you give me the top three department that you worked at? Uh, D and D, Agriculture Canada, and Global Affairs. Okay. Did Mr. Fertz at any time work any on those accounts? Not that. I, not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, do you have uh, documentation safeguarding? in those three departments as part of the work that you're doing? No, we've never had document safeguarding in our history. You've never had document safeguarding in history, regardless of the department that you're working with. It is, and you are saying because PSPC did not request you guys or you did not understand that it, that was a requirement. Am I right to understand that? Uh, I don't have any knowledge of PSPC's processes. You don't have any knowledge of PSPC processes yet. You signed contract 40% of the time with three different departments. I found that very hard, sir, that you don't understand the PSPC process uh, regarding safeguarding of document or anything else while you sign 40% of your contracts. I'll be getting another term and I'll be following on uh, on those lines. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mr. Zwari. Uh, Mrs. Block, please go ahead for five. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Anthony, the Auditor General found that GC Strategies was involved in the development of a contract from the Government of Canada valued at $25 million that your firm uh, received in May of 2022. Now, I know you've made a, uh, you've tried to build a bit of a firewall between your contracts and Mr. Firth's contracts and saying that they are separate. But it is my understanding in your role as the chief security officer that you provide him with support when it comes to security assessments. Is that correct? With regards to security assessments? Yes. Yes. So in, in setting the criteria for the contracts for GC's, uh, that GC Strategies ultimately won, did you provide any advice to Mr. Firth on the security requirements for that contract? No. Why not? If that's your role at GC Strategies, why would you not have provided him with any advice on that? I was not asked. So you only provide advice when you're asked? It's not a given that in your role as the chief security officer, you would be providing that support? Yes, I only give knowledge when asked. As a 50-50 as a partner, do you receive 50% um, of the commission that is earned on Mr. Firth's contracts? At GC Strategies, we share in the profits, yes. Share in the profits, but not in providing advice when it's actually your job to do so. Okay, I get that. 
I guess I'm, maybe I don't. In your role, you would identify resources, vet them, and then notify Mr. Firth on the eligibility of the subcontractors. Is that correct? Yes. Would Mr. Firth ever ask you to change anything? No. Would you ever notify him of any discrepancies or any wrongdoing? Absolutely. Did you have to in the past? Never. Okay. Would he ever ask you to overlook anything? No. Okay. I'm not going to refer to the Auditor General's report. That's the one that you and Mr. Firth are disputing, but you have admitted you haven't read yet. And I'm turning to page 18, and in the Auditor General's report, she identifies some issues with security clearance and some task authorizations for GC strategies. And I'll, I'll just quote it for you. The Canada Border Services Agency issued two task authorizations for cybersecurity assessments of the application under two of the GC strategies contracts valued at approximately $743,000. The task authorizations required that the resources have a reliability security status. And what the Auditor General found is that security assessments were completed for ArriveCAN in a pre-development environment by, um, by subcontractors under GC strategies. However, they found that some resources that were involved in the security assessments were not identified in the task authorizations and did not receive security clearance. In addition, the agency received invoices for resources listed on the task authorizations. However, it was un unable to provide any supporting documentation to confirm that work related to the security assessments was performed by four of the five resources listed. Wouldn't that be part of your job? Um, all of the resources that we provided under those contracts had security clearance. So you're once again disputing the Auditor General's report in regards to what she found. What, what I can tell you is that all GC Strategies resources that worked on the contract had security clearance. So, again, the Auditor General found that the agency was unable to provide any supporting documentation to confirm that work related to the security assessments was performed by four out of the five resources listed. So that's a pretty high percentage of no documentation to confirm that security assessments were conducted. I, I would suggest, sir, that you read the Auditor General's report before you actually dispute uh, what's in it. And that perhaps, again, as a director or a 50-50 partner in this company, you would seek to understand some of the, some of the uh, allegations that are being levied against your company. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Mrs. Block. Thanks. We'll go to you. Sorry, we're out of time for a response, uh, sir. Um, but I'm sure we'll get back to another intervention. Uh, Mr. Du, please. Uh, welcome to go. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will pass to Mr. Jory. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Sidhu. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Anthony. Okay, so um, let's talk about the, the number of RFP. You told us that uh, um, the business that you bring to GC Strategy is split between 60, 40, 60 private, and 40% government. You highlighted the DND, agriculture, and transportation as three areas that uh, you know that you hold as part of your account uh, um, account portfolio within the government. Uh, can you tell me um, since 2015? Uh, that you 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 perform uh, GC strategy. How many RFP in general in 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 those departments have you responded to, and what was your success rate uh, for GC strategy success rate? I think we ran some numbers yesterday. I believe we 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 submitted over two hundred RFPs. And I believe our win 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 rate was around fifteen to twenty percent. 
Okay, so uh, that's good. It looks like you were watching uh, the the testimony, and uh, that that's that's good because it, it, you earlier indicated that uh, you, you had watched part of that testimony. So it look, looks like you're p- watching that part of the testimony, which is good. Okay, on, on the 15 to 20% win rate, um, and what, what's your win rate on the public side? Sorry, on the private side. Um, I don't have those numbers in front of me. I would assume it's probably a little bit higher, 20 to 25%. 20, 25%. Okay. Okay. Um, so when, uh, can you tell us how much effort does it go into uh, preparing an RFP? So 100 RFP, um, you, you put over 200 RFP at 15%. That's about, um, that's about 30, which in my math doesn't add up since you've had 60 to 65 um, uh, you know, uh, contracts with the government. So there, there's some, some, some way my math doesn't add up. And you know, I'll leave that to another round. But uh, can, can you tell me uh, now on your percentage of, uh, sorry, uh, you talked about the percentage under 20%. Okay, so let's go back to 2005. In your earlier response to uh, one of the questions, you said that you saw a trend as early as 2005. Can you tell me exactly what you saw that trend to be, and what was the uh, what was the driver uh, that you saw in 2015 to say, "Oh my God, this is a perfect time to start this company"? Well, in 2000, 2005, I started as a recruiter, and I started in the business at that time. I didn't realize the trends immediately but i knew that i enjoyed doing the work and it was a it was a good way to make money okay so so when you say good way to make money naturally you saw the margins that you the, your firm at that time which you were an employee was making because i'm sure you're privy to that correct i was not privy to the margins that, that okay then how do you know it's a good way to make money I was speaking personally for myself based on salary. Oh, so what you meant is that by tr- by transitioning into becoming a uh, company owner, uh, you would make more money than the the, the salary. But at no time, based on what you claim, you were you had preview into the margins that those subcontractors were making. I would well depending on contracts awarded you, you could see that there's margin involved in a RFP win okay can you tell me based on your from your 2005 to 2015 what kind of margin was there uh, at that time i i believe it was an average of 20 25% okay so that's what you saw in there now why 2015 why not 2010 why not 2017 um, I guess that's a great question. It was, I guess that time in, in our lives, we decided that it was, we could try and do this ourselves. It was right for our families. And we took a chance at starting a company and it worked so, up until uh, a couple months ago. That's, okay. That's sir, our time, uh, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Vignola, please, two and a half. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Mr. Anthony, yesterday, Mr. Firth told us that to prepare accounts and the processes with the government, he, he, he needed to work about 10 hours or so per month. 40 to 80 per month. All you have to do is fill security paperwork how many hours did it take you per month to do that um i i'm the chief security officer but i also get my own business i work no. private sector accounts je parle, je parle vraiment pour arrive. i'm really talking about the security paperwork for arrive can 
how many hours per month did it take you to earn $625,000 per year? I, I have no idea. Est-ce qu'on parle de 10 heures? Are we talking about 10 hours, 20 hours per month? Are we talking about 100 hours? Again, I, I, I don't know. Okay. C'est vraiment... Uh... Very well. You really experienced the ultimate dream. You had a task. No need to inform yourself about the contracts. And you received significant profits. It's more than the American dream. It's the Canadian dream that we've seen. I have a few questions. When you were working at Veritag, did you meet with some people, for example, David Yao? No. No. OK. You are saying that Colin Wood was someone you met there, and then he formed Coradic, and somebody you did business with as well. I worked with Colin Wood at Veritech. OK. Very well. And you also worked with Veroluk Ver Alexandre. I don't know that name. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Backrack, please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Anthony, you uh, previously said you're responsible for the security clearance, not only of the resources, but also of GC strategies. How do you exercise that responsibility? Uh, can you clarify the question uh, for the resources? No, for the company as a whole, you're the chief security officer for the whole company, and you're responsible for GC Strategies security clearance. How do you exercise that responsibility? Well, we have a, a secret facility clearance, and then I maintain that. Okay, and we fo we follow those. We follow the guidelines set out by PSPC. And you said earlier that the thirteen point nine million dollar contract did not require document safeguarding capability. How do you know this? Uh, based on past testimony, I, I, I noticed yesterday that... From that past committee just, testimony? Yes. Okay. So the office of the ombuds, uh, the procurement ombud, stated that uh, the contract for $13.9 million, $13 million uh, the contract itself stated that, quote, the contractor must at all times during the performance of the contract hold a valid designated organization screening, DOS, with approved document safeguarding at the level of protected B. Um, did your company hold that a security no, clearance not. At, the time that the, at the time that it was signed? So why earlier did you say that the contract didn't require document safeguarding when in fact it did? Uh, those words are PSPC's words. I, I'm not. I'm not aware. Uh, I don't think so. This is the contract itself. This is the office of the ombuds, or the, sorry, the the office of the procurement ombuds person, and the, citing the contract. And the this is the words from the report. The contract stated, "quote The contractor must at all times during the performance of the contract hold." Uh, approved document safeguarding at the level of protected B. So I, I guess what's shocking, Mr. Anthony, is that you're the chief security officer. This is a security issue. We're talking about matters of national security. And you weren't familiar with the requirements of the contract at the time that your partner signed it. And it comes back to my earlier question about how you actually carry out your responsibilities as a chief security officer, or whether this is just a title that you guys... You did beat up the titles, and you became chief security officer, but actually you don't do any chief security officer things. I, I'm, I'm struggling to understand how you failed that's, to that's provide our time, this Mr. basic Backrock. level we'll of oversight. We'll have to allow a bit of Thank time you. for, uh, if you could have a response, Mr. Anthony.
I, I have no response. Thanks very much. Mr. Uh, Genwis, uh, for five minutes, please, sir. Mr. Anthony, you, you really had me at I didn't read the Auditor General's report. Now, this report was tabled more than a month ago. Your company has faced grievous consequences, which you have described because of this report. You've been required to testify in large part because of the findings of this report. And this report is feeding into an RCMP investigation that could result in criminal charges against your long-term business partner and against you. Uh, Mr. Anthony, this report is merely 36 pages. And at no point did you think, maybe I should read this thing. Uh, no, I did not. Uh, Mr. Anthony, why are you lying to this committee? I, I'm not lying to this committee. I swore an oath. You, you did, sir. Um, what, what do you think you have to gain by claiming that you didn't read the Auditor General's report? I have nothing to gain. What, what, why are you making this claim when it's clearly not true? It is true. Sir, how, many, how much time did you spend preparing for this hearing today? Not a whole lot. Uh, roughly, though. How, how much time did you spend preparing for this hearing? A couple of hours. A couple hours. Okay. And you didn't think as part of that preparation, you should read the Auditor General's report? It was against my doctor's wishes for me to be working. I have not been working since the start of December. As I, we sent our doctor's notes, he advised Sir, us not to work. Your, your, your doctor advised you not to read the Auditor General's report? No, he said he'd advised me not to work to lower my stress. Okay, sir. In, in, in the couple hours you spent preparing, uh, you didn't read the Auditor General's report, and you came here and you told us you disputed its findings based on what Christian Firth had told you. Yes. Um, Mr. Anthony, I, I don't believe you, first of all, uh, but secondly, I have a hard time making sense of your motivations. Uh, Mr. Firth is under a serious cloud of suspicion, uh, suspicion involving events that you claim you don't have any knowledge about. Um, with that in mind, are you committed to standing by Mr. Firth and believing everything he tells you, regardless of what this investigation reveals? I've known Christian first since 2007. We've been a business partner since 2015. He's an honest, trustworthy, hardworking man and a parent. I have no doubt that he's done nothing wrong. I'm confident all independent investigation will establish that. Were, were you reading what you just said, sir, or were you speaking from the heart? Speaking from the heart. Um, sir, I... Uh, um, I don't even know what to say. This this is so ridiculous, sir. Like, is it not obviously ridiculous to you? You you've come before this committee. You 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 you've been summoned here. You would have been ar arrested by the sergeant at arms if you hadn't shown up. And, and you're telling us you did two hours of prep. You didn't read the auditor general's report, and you're committed to standing by everything Mister Firth tells you, even though you had allegedly no involvement in the events that could lead to criminal charges. Like this, is this what is happening? Uh, uh, Mr. Anthony, um, one, one other question in the, in the time I have left. Uh, what is your uh, relationship with David Yao? Do you know him? Uh, do you have conversations with him? I've never had a conversation with him. I don't know him. Okay. Uh, you are supposed to manage security processes for the company. Have you ever, in the course of your time working for Christian Firth, uh, provided any pushback or raised concerns about things he suggested in terms of, of contracts, contractors, processes, uh, or, have you, or have you not? I have not. So you, you affirm, uh, approve, rubber stamp 
uh, the things that Mr. Firth uh, provides you. I, I don't approve things that he I got, I'm not sure where you what what the question is this is, is. this is, a, this is the, a strange partnership uh, yeah that is our time mr. generous okay. mr. Sousa go ahead please sir <clears throat> thank you chair um, mr. Anthony you're a 50 50 percent owner of this company correct you yes made that, they made that clear and you share 50 50 percent of the profits generated from the contracts as well, correct? Yes. And in those uh, those costs associated with a particular contract, if Mr. Firth has sourced the contract to arrive, can does he charge himself a, a, a salary or a fee prior to sharing the profits with you? No. So when he does a $20 million deal or a $10 million deal, and you do a $1 million deal, you share on the $20 million deal equally with Mr. Firth, and he shares in the million dollar deal that you do on your own. Is that how it works? Yes, in most cases. So you're benefiting quite a bit from this association with Mr. Firth. If he's doing all the work, if he's, if he's providing and sourcing the contracts, if he's the one that's having deliberations, and you're saying that, hey, I'm just the guy that stamps and does the fingerprinting. Is that what you're saying? You're saying he, he actually sources a lot. He sources a lot of revenue for you. Yeah, I, and I focus on my work. So how much of the work, the GC strategies, how much of the profits are generated by you? Um, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Well, let's assume you got two and a half. Well, I mean... Mr. Firth explained yesterday that he got $2.5 million as the net result of his engagement with the can over those two-year periods. Uh, presumably, did you get a $2.5 billion net return on your contracts? Um, I, don't have the, I don't have those numbers in front of me right now. You don't know if you're equally contributing to the generation of profits for the company. Are you equally, are you and him equal partners in terms of revenue generation? Yes. All right. So all the work that Mr. Firth did for GC Strategies in this period of time, you did equally the same amount in that profit. Not, well, I, I don't know. I don't know that, that answer. Um, were you around? Were you? When were you at Veritech? How long were you at Veritech? When did you start? I was started there in two thousand and five, and I left in two thousand and ten. So, what happened at Veritech around that time? Are you aware of the bid rigging allegations and issues that occurred? Yes. And what happened with Veritech? Did they were they charged? Did they, get, did they plead guilty? What explain to us what took place? Um, I am not sure. I believe I, I had left the company. I, I don't know what happened with that whole scenario. But you were there and you weren't aware how well, I was, I, I, I was there as a recruiter. I was not involved in any of those accounts that were in question at that time. I was, I was not investigated. And you have not been in touch with any investigators as a result of this ongoing issue. The last six months, has, has any investigators I, called you? No. Um, explain to me, uh, there's a lot of deliberations, a lot of considerations given to the value of your contribution and that of Mr. Firth to the program. In, this, in essence, why do you exist? Why is it that the that we need you and Mr. Firth to provide services? Like you're not doing the service, right? You're providing the, the, the skill sets, you're assembling teams of people. Explain to us why that's why is that worth twenty percent or ten percent? Um we were asked we were asked to do do a job for a price and we did it and you bid on that price uh, you bid on like I, I i understand this one may not have been bid how did this one come to be how, well, how did the these last two or three that are in question 
on my contracts? No, on my the last can. on the on these with a red can. How do they? How do those contracts come oh. to be? I have no knowledge of that. How do your contracts come to be? My contracts, they come out through RFP. All of my contracts that I've been awarded have been competed. So an RFP would come out on the street. I would read it, see if we have a partner network or resources that would be interested in bidding on the opportunity, speak with those resources, clarifying if our corporate requirements meets that of that department. We put together a bid, submit, and if we were awarded the contract, we execute on the contract. Thank you very much. That is our time. Mr. Bear, please go ahead, sir. Numbered company. What is it? Pardon me? You have a numbered company. Uh, what is the company? I don't see how that's relevant. Well, first of all, it's relevant because I've asked. It's uh, also important that we have an understanding of your business dealings. And um, I've asked the question, and you're obligated to answer it. The numbered company, sir. Uh, the numbered company owns my shares. The numbered company owns your shares. Is it registered in Canada? Yes. And is Christian Firth a part of this numbered company? No. And the shares that you're referring to are in GC Strategies? Yes. Does it hold shares in any other company? No. Do you have any business abroad? And do you own any interests in companies uh, outside of Canada? No. Do you know if Christian Firth has any businesses outside of Canada? N no. No businesses? You, sorry, you don't know or he doesn't have them? I don't know. So you're the Chief Security Officer of GC Strategies. Can you testify that the ArriveCan app was totally secure and the data that was collected was totally secure? I have no knowledge of that. Are you the Chief Security Officer for GC Strategies? Yes. Did GC Strategies work on ArriveCan? Yes. So the Auditor General says that your company was paid nearly $20 million on a $60 million uh, project, and you don't have any knowledge of it as one of two people in a two-person company, and your role specifically is Chief Security Officer of GC Strategies, and your testimony is that you have no knowledge of the security of the data that was collected and if it was secure. The security data that I collected is secure. What, what is this, the data that you collected? He's, uh, people's personal information and could be passports. So are you, talking about the are you talking about the users of the app or are you talking about contractors on the app? Contractors on the app. But you have no idea about where ArriveCan data was stored as the chief security officer for GC Strategies? Absolutely not. Did, do you know if anyone outside of Canada worked on the app? I have no knowledge of that. Would you say you did more or less work than Christian Firth on ArriveCan? Less. So he said he did um, about 10 hours a week. So you did less than 10 hours a week for one and a quarter million dollars? I work, I work full time. I don't work by the hour. 
So on this contract, we, your partner said that he worked uh, 40 hours per month to earn two and a half million dollars, of which you say you share 50% of that. So the question is about work on this app. I'm I'm looking to find out. You said you worked less than Mr. Firth did, than Mr. Firth, Mr. Firth did, and he said he worked for what works out to uh, less than 10 hours a week. So that's accurate for you as well on ArriveCan. I did not work on the app. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of that with your company that, that you gentlemen were paid, uh, you, you, you were made millionaires by, uh, uh, by Canadians and you uh, didn't do any actual work on Justin Trudeau's $60 million arrive scam. And you've come here today and you have no answers. You expressed that you were concerned about the impact this has on your other business. I think that the people um, who contracted you to do, be, to do business would be uh, concerned as well after seeing um, your inability to actually articulate what it is that your company does and how you exercise your role as chief security officer. Thanks, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Zwari, please, for five. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Anthony, I'm going to go back to um, uh, three periods, 2005 to 2010, 2010 to 2015, and uh, uh, the, uh, the found passion at that time, 2015 to present. What kind of trend did you see between 2005 um, to 2010 and then 2010 to 15 and 15 forward around out, uh, requests for either outsourcing or staff augmentation as it relates to the government? Well, I did definitely notice a increase from 2010 to 2015. So, so what? So you did not? Is it because you are in a different capacity, uh, working a different capacity between two thousand and ten to two thousand and fifteen? Well, uh, this is re in relation to trends. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So my network got larger during that those that period. I got a better understanding of the business, and I I could notice that there was more contracting coming out of the federal government. Okay, do, do you, so b between 2010 to 2015, what do you think the driver was? And do you think the driver somehow peaked at 2015 and you said, oh my God, this is great, let me jump on it? Uh, not, not really. I'm, I, somewhere around, if I was going to pick a year between 2012, 2013, I would guess there's... It seemed to be an influx at that point. So what, what would you attribute that influx to? Um, you're, you, you're, you're monitoring, you're a business owner. Uh, sorry, you're monitoring the market because you want to you put people and you're saying you saw an influx. Did you ever was, looked into why was the influx coming? There was more and more RFPs on, available for bid for tender on the streets. By government of Canada, yes. During two thousand and between two thousand and sorry, between two thousand and twelve to two thousand and thirteen, is that what you're saying? That's what. That yes. Is, is there have any have you made any observation around, um, you know, department uh, or or government at that time, um, making decisions uh, that you, you you could recall that would impact that. I'm trying to use my word very carefully. Um, no, not that I recall, no. Is it possible that a government during that period, a government tough time during that period, got rid of a lot of... Uh... No. If we've um, lost you, Mr. Civil Mr. servants, and therefore oh. by default... Mr. Jouari, we, we lost a very Mr. old Jouari. system. They had to go in. We lost you there. Could you just start at the beginning for that yes. last question, please? Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, thanks. I can hear you. Okay, sir. Okay. Is it possible that during that period, a correlation exists between the fact that the government uh, of that time, uh, in the interest of potentially balancing the budget, 
they got rid of a lot of civil servants that are a lot of intelligence or a lot of, um, let's say, uh, capacity. And then they had to compensate that by going out and uh, outsourcing uh, for staff augmentation. I'm not sure about that. Is that it's a possibility? You're not sure. You're in this business, you've been in this business since 2005, you found the aspiration to register a company 2015, you have, because of your network, you and your partner have done well among the 636 uh, company, and you're not watching trends and you're not making observations? Am I no, hearing I do, you right? No, I do watch trends and do make observations. Okay. So what was your observation during that period? And what is your observation do you, from 2015 until now? My, well, my observation at that time, there was more and more RFPs available for tender. On that time, it was buy and sell. Okay. And how about 2015 to present? It would be, I guess, status quo. Status quo meaning what? The same the same RFP numbers that it was during 2013, 2012, 2013? I don't understand. I, well, I don't have those numbers in front of me on what the actual numbers but were. But we're talking but about trends. You know 200. You've, you've told me since 2015 you've had 200, uh, 200 contracts. And you're telling well, me that there's... 200 submissions for RFP. We did not have 200 contracts. Okay. So 200 submission for RFP, you're telling me a rate of 15%. So that would be about 30 contracts. You've secured 60 to 65 contracts, which is nearly about 35 to 40%. Some numbers do not make sense to me, sir. As an owner of a business, which have proven to be successful, I would strongly suggest you be prepared for the next round of questions that I'm going to ask to be able to talk about those trends and what you've made an observation. Thank and you, I sir. I think my time is up. Yes, it is. Thanks, Mrs. Uh, Thank you, sir. please. Merci beaucoup, Mr. Thank you very much, Chair. I'll ask you a simple question concerning Arrive Khan. Do you know how much you earned the amount that entered any of your bank accounts. Do you know any of these amounts? I'm not even asking about the amounts. I want to know if you know how much you earned. I don't have those numbers. Wow. Vous êtes un chef d'entreprise. You are a company owner. You have contracts multiple times, notably with the government of Canada, but you do not know how much you make in life and you have two other numbered companies well things seem to be going very well for you i would like to be so rich that i don't have to bother to know how much i earn and how much i spend i'm sorry but it's really incredible you talked about Opportunities starting in 2012, 2015, is it consistent with cutbacks that were made to technology workers at that time? Dismissals of staff? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. It could be. Okay, so it must be one of the numbers. It must be some of the chance experiences we've seen in this committee for a while now, for some weeks. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Before the purchase of Corridal, you were an employee, a salaried worker at Veritag, and later with iForce Consulting. Am I correct? That's correct. Come on. How do you go from salaried worker to company owner and someone who receives a security clearance? Est-ce que vous avez utilisé une... Did you have to use another company as a donor and then delete the other company? How does it work, the process? 
Well, we were basically how we started the companies. We were entrepreneurs and we decided to take a, a risk and invest oh. our money to purchase Cordell. Okay. That's, I'm sorry, Merci. that's our time. Mr. Backrack, please go ahead, sir. Mr. Anthony, uh, PSPC suspended your company's security clearance. I imagine as chief security officer, this was uh, news that uh, gave you quite a bit of concern. Is that correct? No, actually, we canceled Mr. First security clearance the day before. He was a key security officer for the company, and we canceled his clearance. Then we were aware that we were going to lose our Docu or uh, security clearance for the company. Okay, wait, I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Mr. Firth was the chief security officer? No, he was, he was, he's a key security officer. He, he's a key, a key security officer and you're yeah. the chief security officer. Yeah. And yeah. because you knew you were going to lose your company's security clearance, he preemptively canceled his security clearance? No, we, well, we do, we weren't able to do business with the government of Canada. We were suspended right. from everything. So our company security clearance was irrelevant. We would never be using it. So we deleted his clearance, thus knowing we're going to lose our clearance. Does the company have security clearance in addition to Mr. Firth's own personal security clearance? No, I have my, I still have my personal security clearance. I, so when, I believe when, so when PSPC suspended your company's security clearance, what did that mean? What were they suspending? They were suspending us from allowing any, allowing us to get anybody a security clearance or hold anyone's security clearance. And so, so PSPC it, has suspended uh, Mr. Firth's security clearance? Yes, his, his, his security clearance has been terminated. And yours has not? Not to my knowledge. Okay, interesting. Um, and as chief security officer, did the loss of Mr. Firth's security clearance um, concern you? No, we were aware that this was going to happen. We actioned it. And did you communicate with PSPC about the, the revocation of security clearance? Yes. Does the fact that you still have your own personal security clearance mean that you can still uh, approve the, the clearance of resources that work on projects? No. Why not? Because we don't have any government contracts. We don't have any government contractors. For me to get into the system, I will not be able to process anyone's clearance. I don't have access. Thank you. Did PSPC and okay? Thank yes, you, Mr. Sorry, Chair. sir. You'll have a couple more rounds. So, uh, Mr. Brock, go ahead, sir. Thank you, Chair. Um, Mr. Anthony, does it concern you that uh, Mr. Firth actively engaged in, in acts of uh, fraud and forgery in relation to the uh, Butler contract? And furthermore, his evidence at committee that it was a standard practice of his to take a look at various resumes with other contracts and to match it to the requirements set out uh, by the government. Um, does it, that, that, it might, that to me, as a former prosecutor, just spells out another word for criminality. So on a personal level, sir, does it concern you that your partner has been engaged in criminal acts, yes or no? I don't think he did. So you are defending his actions, is that correct? Yeah, I don't think he did. Are you defending his actions, sir? Are you saying that yes. what he did, what he did with respect to Bottler, changing their resumes without their consent and doing that same sort of practice with other contractors was entirely acceptable by your standards? I don't think he did that. He said he did. So that's fine. You're defending him. I, that's, I, I have you on record. That's, that's an important uh, point that perhaps you want to discuss uh, with your counsel. Now, you'll have to forgive me as well, sir, that in your opening statement, you, you wanted 
you wanted the public to to uh, to have some sympathy uh, for the situation that your company, the government of Canada Strategies, is now facing in terms of the financial hardship. But according to uh, public accounts data, Government of Canada Strategies has received $59 million in federal funding from all federal departments combined since 2017. So if we take your commission value of 15% at the lowest all the way to 30% at the highest, that means you and Firth since 2017 over the last seven years received $8.85 million at the 15% mark, or upwards to $17.7 million at the highest mark. That's roughly $4.4 million to you, sir, upwards to $8.8 million. Now, in light of Justin Trudeau's just very poor fiscal policies that he's adopted since 2015 and the affordability crisis that Canadians are facing, you will probably understand that no Canadian has any sympathy for you, sir, in the situation you're in. Because that amount of money uh, is something that's almost akin to winning the taxpayer lottery. So I'm not asking for a response, but I want you to consider that, sir, that you have been rewarded very handsomely at the backs of Canadian taxpayers. Now, last uh, line of questioning. What did you actually do in the grand total of two hours to prepare for this meeting, aside from talking to Christian Firth? What did you do? What did you review? I, I've re reviewed my own contracts. Did you think that someone in, at this committee would be asking about your contracts with the government of Canada? That's that's all. That's all I know. That's all you know. You don't know anything about your partner's involvement with the government of Canada and all the allegations against him. You didn't think there'd be other yeah. questions related to your involvement with Christian Firth. Well, I figured there would be questions related to Christian Firth. There were, I was surprised. Did Christian, that was Firth, did Christian Firth tell you what to say today, sir? Not at all. Do you always believe what Mr. Firth says to you? I trust him, yes. Do you always believe what he says to you? I trust him, yes. Yes. So if he said to you, and I guess he did say to you, I disagree with the Auditor General's report. You took that at face value without conducting any independent investigation on your own. I often tell my 14-year-old twin daughters, if you're going to do what, what friends say you're going to do, are you going to jump off a bridge if a friend tells you to do that as well? Do you ever push back on your, on your uh, business acquaintance or business partner, Mr. Firth? Have I ever pushed back? Yes. Yes. Okay. And in this particular case, you didn't think a very explosive document by an auditor who's been in the business of auditing for decades, and you have no auditing experience, do you? No. No. And Firth has no auditing experience. Right? I don't think so, no. So if, if, if Firth says, we disagree with everything that she has said, you will always accept that at face value. Well, he has knowledge. He has knowledge. Thanks, Mr. Block. Uh, Mr. Sousa, go ahead, and then we will uh, do our second suspension. Go ahead, Mr. Sousa. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. And... Um, I have only a few questions, and I'm going to move my motion as well prior to our suspension, if that's okay. Um, Mr. Anthony, I think reference was just made about the name of your company. It, is it called the Government of Canada, or is it called GC Strategies? It's GC Strategies Incorporated. So there is not called the Government of Canada Incorporated. You're, you're not operating under that name. You're operating under GC. No, you, we, Mr. We, First, we yes, it, go ahead. We operate under GC Strategies. That's our legal name. Okay. And uh, we understand yesterday from Mr. Firth, you picked GC Strategies for what reason as, as the initials? 
we we just thought that it would be it would be good to call it in we would say GC Strategies means okay. Government of Canada. Yeah, fair enough. And when you purchased uh, Cordell at the time, you were both equal partners in the investment. Equal amounts of money were contributed. Yes, and we had an, another business partner at the time. Have you owned any other companies prior to GC Strategies? No. This is your first foray in this, and so as an entrepreneur and and and, and a shareholder. Yes. Uh, some of my colleagues have questioned you and pressed you pretty hard on the fiduciary duty that you have as part of a director and an owner of this company. I would uh, suggest with your counsel, look into some of the requirements and the corporate nature that you rep you represent and have quite a bit of uh, exposure here. And, uh, and, and I, so it's, we all find it rather odd that you don't have knowledge or or an understanding of these consequences. And are you telling us that you and Mr. Firth don't discuss the legal implications or the the um, uh, the accusations being made against you by the by this investigation? No, we discuss files, contracts, contracts generally but not specifics. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, if I could move a, the motion that's been tabled already. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Sousa. And I believe there may be an amendment to it um, by one of our colleagues. Uh, it reads um, that the committee invites the president of the Treasury Board and Minister of Public Services and Procurement to appear for one and a half, for one hour and a half, as well as officials to appear for two hours regarding the 2023-2024 supplementary est estimates C, uh, the 2024-2025 main estimates, and the 2024-25 departmental plans if the meeting take place on Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. Thanks. Before I start a, uh, speaking, well, I see Mrs. Vignola, but before I start, can I just get you to confirm, Mr. Souza, the intent will be have the two ministers side by side for an hour and a half with uh, their officials with them for two hours yes and they will be there just from wednesday would be four thirty or wednesday would be four thirty to so they'll be there four thirty to six so the yes, two ministers four thirty to six and their officials from four thirty to six thirty is that the intent uh, the intent would be for them to be available side by side throughout that period of time right but the officials would be four thirty to six thirty and the minister is 4.30 to 6. Am I reading that right? Yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, I've got... Uh, uh, yep. Uh, Chair, are we able to uh, allow the witness, the five minutes offered to him to confer uh, with his uh, legal counsel while we have this debate? Um, I still intend to suspend for a few minutes after, regardless. Okay, but okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Anthony, if you wish to... Turn off your mic um, and take a break. You may, because this will take a few minutes, and then we'll, we'll then we'll officially suspend. I have uh, but, Mrs. But, but, point of order, Chair. Can I just suggest that we not do the suspension? We tell no. Mr. Anthony he's going to have 10, 15 minutes. Uh, no, thank you, though. Uh, Mrs. Vignola, go ahead, please, on the motion. Um, très rapidement. Very quickly. I am moving a friendly amendment. I am moving a friendly amendment for the list of witnesses mentioned in the main motion be changed to add Madam Ogaman or Morgan from the Canada Border Services, Miss Erin Ogaman, that she be added to the list. Amendment to add the president of CBSA on the estimates, departmental plans, and the supplementary estimates. Exactly. Exactly. Merci. Thank you. Well, I know uh, Mr. General set his hand up on the original motion, but do we have anyone wishes to speak on the amendment? Uh, 
I take it we're fine with the amendment then? The CBSA doesn't fall under our mandate. It's fine. Okay. Perfect. We will do so. Consider that uh, amended. So we're back to the amended motion. Did you still wish to speak on that, Mr. Genos? I do, yeah. Um, Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I think what we've seen consistently from liberals, frankly, across committees is that uh, they want to really limit and constrain the amount of time that we have as members to hear from uh, ministers. Uh, this this uh this this is uh, a, a, a very significant curtailment of time. Uh, frankly, if, if if this is about respecting the time of ministers, it doesn't. They, they don't need to appear side by side. We can hear from them uh, for a longer period of time in total. But so we have a chance to ask each of them them questions. Uh, I don't I don't uh, see any logic in having two ministers appear uh, on both the supplement three estimates and the main estimates all at once and limiting that uh, to such a relatively uh, short a short period of time. Uh, the, this is just part of, of liberal efforts to limit the amount of, of, uh, of real exposure their ministers have uh, to, to uh, actually have to respond to questions. Uh, we're, we're in the midst of this, this uh, explosive scandal involving government procurement. Uh, we've been, been uh, told that uh, ministers effectively don't do very much when it comes to the actual uh, processes of procurement in, 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 involved. Uh, I think we've got a lot of questions that we need to get answers to. Uh, and um, and the fact that the Liberals are, are in the middle of another witness testimony proposing a motion to so uh, severely limit uh, the, the, uh, the opportunity that we have to ask ministers questions doesn't, doesn't make any, any sense. Uh, what I would propose uh, as a starting point is a, is a simple amendment. Uh, uh, add the word... Um, uh, each in front of the word uh, uh, appear, um, and then separately after the word uh, uh, appear, so that it would read to each peer separately uh, for one hour and a half um, to to emphasize that uh, look if 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 the minister's saying I'm so busy I only have an hour and a half uh, to to appear before the committee, uh, then each minister should should appear uh, on their own uh, to answer questions uh, and so that. Uh, uh, the committee is is able to get more questions answered uh, with the same uh, allocation of of each minister's time. So that's I think a very a very reasonable amendment that re re reflects the parameters of, of of time the ministers have, um, and and uh, is not the kind of uh, draconian limiting of accountability that is proposed in the original motion. Thanks, Mr. Genuis. Um, take a speaking list on that. I will note, however, I'm. Uh, as chair and someone who's been on OGA for a long time, I'm a bit concerned about this. Traditionally, we've always had one full hour for the supplementary estimates, one full hour on the mains. So now we're actually reducing it quite uh, significantly on that. And being an estimates geek, I'm a bit uh, concerned. But Mr. Sousa, go ahead on Mr. Uh, Genuis's uh, motion or amendment, sorry. Yeah, so now we're dealing with uh, a new amendment to a combined Right. And uh, we understand that uh, the ministers are appearing, that they want to make every effort to engage with respect to what's happening. Um, but the degree of availability and the and degree of, dis of deliberation that we've had thus far has been extensive. And the ministers are trying to accommodate uh, the activity and the engagement with the committee in regards to this. There's going to be other opportunities for the ministers to appear as well. We just want to make certain that the value and, and, and the execution of that time is productive to all of us. And uh, so, yeah, this is what we're proposing. We're proposing and making them available as necessary to our committee as they are going to be to others. And so I Thank would proceed to, to move forward with the, uh, the, the, the way it was already established with the amendment provided by uh, Mrs. Van Nola and to uh, move forward. Okay. I have Mrs. Without, the added, without the added amendment, <laughs> For each. Yeah. Thank you. I have uh, Mrs. Block, and then we'll go back to Mr. Uh, Genres. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It would seem to me that there is some confusion in regards to the ministers, the invitation of ministers to appear before committee. Um, it is my understanding that we are inviting them to appear before committee to answer any questions this committee has about the supplementary estimates and the main estimates that we are not inviting them here at this point in time to speak about ARRIVE-CAN. 
and that, you know, in keeping with what has been tradition, um, we are inviting them for an hour to each to, to speak to us about the supplementary estimates and the main estimates. I think Mr. Sousa is confused. Thanks, Mr. Genuas, then Mr. Baines. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, excellent points by my by my colleagues. Just, just to add, I mean, in, in terms of respecting the minister's time, I understand that ministers are busy people. Uh, if if uh, we're being told that uh, the ministers have that much time on that particular day, uh, then let's use their time well uh, by having them appear um, appear separately. That's all my amendment amendment does. It, it doesn't in any way affect the amount of time uh, that they're going to spend on that particular day. It just it's just that they will spend uh, the time separately so that we can actually hear from both and and hear. Uh, uh, answers or at least responses from from both. Uh, that is uh, that is very reasonable in, in terms of of balancing uh, what apparently their scheduling requirements are, as well as as uh, a legitimate expectation of uh, democratic accountability. Thanks, Mr. Baines, and then Mr. Shawari. Um, I think. I think in order to hear from the ministers, um, and I think Mr. Genius indicated that they actually aren't day-to-day -day involved in the procurement process, and we have um, other staff um, um, uh, that are um, uh, deputy ministers, etc., that can come also at the same time to answer um, the questions that are um, uh, posed. So I think if, I think that is an ample amount of time if if both ministers can appear at the same time. Thanks. And before we go to Mr. Jawari, just to be clear, this is, again, it's the minister's opportunity to defend their supplementary estimates, which is in the billions, and their opportunity to defend the main estimates, which is in the tens and tens of billions. This is not to address procurement day to day, but to actually defend their request for Parliament to approve the billions of dollars, which is the whole reason why this committee exists. And frankly, going back to 1295, the model Parliament, why Parliament exists. Um, Mr. Jawari, go ahead, sir. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, on that note, I believe a combined one and a half hour um, is. Um, Takes many many aspects and many concerns into account. First of all, they're they're each one of them are made themselves very well, an extra thirty minutes. And if we look at the totality of it, uh, we are looking at uh, each one of them were coming uh, as one hour uh, for for the main and uh, as well as the sub C. Then we are really saying that. Uh, let's use the uh, you know uh, efficiency uh, factor coming in, and that extra th uh, thirty minutes that we are we are discussing. I mean, it, if you look at the the rotation, a twenty five minute rotation is two spots for liberal, two spots for um, you know um, uh, CPC, and one spot uh, two and a half minutes and two and a half minutes. So really, this is not a drastic as some of our colleagues are trying to to make it sound. It's just it's just making sure that we get the minister here as soon as possible when they're available available and they're going to answer any questions it is in terms of being able to ask from the end. I end so i see no other speakers can we move to a vote on uh mr genuis's amendment no recorded vote okay go ahead sir the vote is on the amendment in the name of Mr. Genuis. Ms. Sidhu? No. Mr. Baines? No. Mr. Jahari? Against. Mr. May? No. Mr. Sousa? No. Ms. Block? Yes. Mr. Genemus? Yes. Mr. Brock? Yes. Madame Vignola? Oui. Mr. Babrak? Yes. Uh, I will vote yes as well. It is carried. 
Mr. Genuas. Uh, thank you, Chair. That's, uh, that's good news. Uh, I want to make uh, one more proposed uh, change. Uh, traditionally, we have heard from the ministers uh, separately on the supplementary estimates uh, and the, the main estimates. I think that the efforts uh, to, to bundle together the supplementary estimates, the main estimates, and the departmental plans uh, really aren't aren't respectful of the processes that the committee uh, should should follow. So I would uh, propose that we uh, remove uh, the text from that says quote the 2024 2025 main estimates and the 2024 2025 departmental plans, uh, so that the the hearing on the on March 20th would be uh, um, the effect of that amendment would be that the hearing on uh, March 20th is on the supplementary estimates. That's in keeping with the traditions of this this committee, and I think the reasonable expectations of, at all committees of of uh, accountability taking place in relation to uh, to each set of estimates. Thanks. So, striking main estimates with the intent, I assume that the main estimates will be reviewed at a separate time, as been done in the past. Mr. Sousa, are you speaking on Mr. Uh, sorry, Chair, just to clarify, striking main estimates and the reference to departmental yes, plans. Sorry. So striking both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I have Mr. Souza, then I have Mrs. Vignol. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just going through it now. So uh, we were trying to extend some time to provide for both ministers to appear, to do what was uh, requested and what we require. And um, now we're suggesting that we have multiple engagements, in essence, right? So you're asking that um, we've added on uh, another member of, Mr. Mr. O'Garman and Ms. O'Garman, and now we're requesting that instead of providing some efficiencies to the work by allowing extended time for the two ministers to appear concurrently in regards to these matters, you're asking for uh, separate engagements and now separate meetings relative to each of one, one of these um, and, uh, and the time that will be required for that. Are you then supposedly reducing the time of each minister's appearance? And I'm not sure that that's being amended here. Um, so I'm just looking for some guidance and clearance and, and concurrence with other members of my team and staff. Of course, we're all virtual here, so that's even more difficult to attend to. Um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at how we would proceed without having further discussion in regards to some of those amendments. And um, I'm, I'm actually quite um, concerned about proceeding uh, without having the ability to have uh, concurrence with some members of my team. And uh, I'm looking for some guidance in that regard. And I, I, I would prefer to see what we have put forward to expedite it and facilitate the meeting and extend the meeting accordingly to provide uh, for more wholesome discussion relative to these issues. So then we'll go to uh, Mrs. Vignola while she is uh, chatting. I encourage you to perhaps chat with your team. But we could certainly go back to the traditional way as we've done it the last eight years I've been here, which is one full separate meeting with um, TBS and one, one full separate meeting for uh, PSBC. But go ahead, Mrs. Uh, Vignola. Uh, merci, Monsieur. Thank you, Chair. I'm seeking confirmation. We have had two separate meetings for the Treasury Board and public services and procurement. What, well, we could do that, but generally, ministers come for one hour and we meet with the public servants for one hour. That's what I understood from Mr. Genesis' amendment that we were going to have two hours with the ministers, the two ministers. And that would be the same thing we do normally one hour with the minister and one hour with the other minister, and then we see the public servants. So I would like to confirm my understanding of the situation because what we are asking here is not the same thing. Is Mr. Genius now asking that we dedicate two minutes, two hours per minister, or two or three hours to talk about the ministerial plans that we've just received? because I voted for two hours for the two plans, considering that normally it's one hour for each plan. The, the amendment as it is, is amending the original um, motion, which is 
the ministers together for an hour and a half with the officials there for two hours in one meeting to change it to the estimates only. So won't the amendments not to do to our to go back to our normal process, which is one minister for an hour and the officials for the full two hours, and then a second meeting of a standalone minister for an hour. This is just amending what's in front of us, which is an hour and a half with the minister side by side. We would require to perhaps defeat all of this and then try to rebook a minister and a minister in separate meetings to go back to what we traditionally have done here in the past. For clarification purposes, I would like to see the amendment as moved by Mr. Genius, the one we have before us now. I would like to have it in writing so that everything is clear. Clear for me and for my entire team. Thank you. Yeah, I don't suppose you have uh, the, well, I don't think Mr. Genius has the amended one. In writing, how about we just have the clerk read back the uh, the amend the amended motion as Mr. Genuis proposes? Because it's just take it's, ba it's basically just taking out main estimates and departmental plans with the intent. I'm going to assume so. I can have the clerk another one for the plans and another for the a motion to have the minister show up for the main estimates or for the departmental plans. It's we have just booked them because the ministers have always agreed because it's part of their every minister's role is to attend their committee and defend their estimates and justify why they're asking for X amount of dollars. So we will, I, I'm going to assume we're not going to need a separate motion to have them come to do the main estimates as they should be doing. But this is, and we've never in the past had a separate motion to actually have them show up to do the supplementary estimates either. It's just we book them as is their role to defend. I can have the clerk just read back where we're at right now, though, for you. It's, it's, it's a very short one, actually. Can go ahead, sir. And then I've got Mr. Genuis and Mr. May. To date, we have uh, amended the original motion by Mr. Souza with the amendment proposed by Madame Vignola. It was subsequently amended as well, <clears throat> pardon me, by the amendment put forward by Mr. Genuis. And now we are on a second amendment by Mr. Genuis. And this is the text that I have based on the second amendment that's currently being debated right now by the committee. That the committee invites the President of the Treasury Board, the Minister of Public Service and Procurement Canada, and the President, Canada Border Services Agency, Aaron O'Gorman, to each appear separately for one and a half each hours, I presume is the missing word there, as well as officials, regarding the 2023-2024 Supplementary Estimates C. And again, the current amendment would remove the main estimates, 2024-2025, and their respective department plans, and that the meeting take place on Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. That is the amendment proposed by Mr. Genuis currently being debated by the committee. Uh, Mr. Genuis, go ahead, and then Mr. May, then Mr. Baines. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, just um, sort of fairly, fairly briefly, um, the, uh, I, I, Mr. Souza said, "Well, we need a bit more time and discussion for for this." I mean, Mr. Souza is the one that moved his motion in the middle of witness testimony, so uh, I'm working with the text of a motion that that uh, that he put forward. Uh, that's that's why we're in this situation. Uh, the 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 chair uh, has in the past, uh, quite rightly, I think, asked ministers to appear before the committee uh, on those different aspects of their responsibility. the The intent of this motion seems to be uh, to be to do something irregular, that is to bundle together uh, ministers and um, and uh, also to bundle together accountability events. So to take, normally we hear from a minister on the SUPS, a minister on the mains, another minister on the SUPS, another minister on the mains. He wants to have all the ministers on the SUPS and the mains and the departmental plans happen all at once. And this is, this is a, uh, an attempt by Mr. Souza and, and his government to limit accountability, uh, to limit the need uh, of ministers to respond to, to questions. Uh, and that's quite obvious. Uh, so given that he has, in the middle of witness testimony, put forward this motion aimed at limiting accountability, uh, we are seeking amendments to go uh, within the 
parameters of minister schedules as we understand them. Uh, let's go back to the normal thing. Uh, so um, to, to the question about what uh, the effect of this second amendment, and, and I think this is, this is the last amendment. I, I'd be happy, you know, we'd be happy to see this motion uh, pass with this amendment, uh, is uh, to simply say that this would be the supplementary estimates, uh, not the, um, and, and that the, the main estimates uh, can be dealt with in the normal fashion. Um, so that's, that's really all that needs to be said. Thanks, Mr. May, then Mr. Baines. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, my original hand went up to, uh, to ask a question uh, that that uh, my block colleague uh, got a, a clear answer to because um, it was getting a bit uh, a bit confusing in terms of what uh, what we were amending and, and how we were amending it. Uh, but to to to, um, to my colleague uh, uh, Mr. Genuis's uh, comments, I, I find it amusing um, that we moved motion to to bring the ministers. Um, uh, to to be accountable for their ministries, and now he's accusing us of of of, uh, of somehow uh, protecting the ministers uh, from that accountability. Um, but I, I I and I and I would point out that um, and I and I'm a guest here. I, I uh, I'm I'm covering for um, uh, my honourable colleague uh, Eric Kazmierczak. So I so I, I regret I don't have a, a clear line of sight of the the norm of this committee. Uh, but I can I can speak to uh, the traditions of other committees, and uh, as the former chair of uh, Human Resources, Skills, and Social Development, and the status of people with disabilities, uh, I did that. Uh, was was very honored to to take on that role for four years. Um, quite often, we would have ministers appear together just out of out of pure necessity. Uh, we have a limited time uh, in the calendar to to have ministers appear before committee. Uh, before the estimates are are are, are through the process, um, the question should be asked: Do we do we want to have the, the, the member the the ministers here to actually speak to to uh, these uh, these um, these measures uh, after the fact uh, after they've been processed? Well, of course not. We want to be able to speak to to them uh, before uh, before the process is is wrapped up. So I think, you know, I. I, I I, I, I understand the comment uh, and where it's coming from 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 uh, from my colleague, uh, Mr. Genius. But uh, to be blunt, uh, I think you know we we have uh, uh, very limited time in order to to go through these these uh, these measures. Uh, bringing them together uh, is not always the easiest thing to do, and we all, we also don't know that it is possible to have them appear together. We'll have to wait to uh, to get response back from from the ministers and their schedulers. Um, but I think that the the motion from my colleague, um, Mr. Souza, is is more than reasonable, um, and I think we're getting very uh, we're getting far from the actual motion that was tabled. It's it's become something completely different. Um, so I think uh, to that uh, to that I will will vote no uh, on this uh, on this amendment. But uh, thank you for the time, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Mr. May. We'll go to Mr. Baines. But I will point out that we have until May thirty first before the. Uh the main estimates are deemed reported, so we do have a fair amount of time still. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Baines, and then Mr. Sousa. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'm, I'm just uh, wondering if we can, if I could get uh, the motion as it is now uh, in writing, please. Uh, I know uh, the clerk um, read it out, but it's just tough to follow if we can get that in writing and email to all of us. Yep, the clerk will send that out. Mr. Souza. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So we are trying to provide uh, the ministers availability. Um, my understanding, a lot of ministers are made accordingly, and we're trying. Uh, I, 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 I won't be supporting the motion for Mr. Jones because we're trying to facilitate and get the very individuals before this committee. Uh, to do what is necessary on our behalf, and so um, I, I'm, I, I, I look forward to reading it once it comes forward. I look forward to seeing exactly what is being. Uh, I'm going to suspend for two minutes.
sent out the motion as it's been amended and agreed upon and written into it, what he has sent out includes Mr. Genuis's amendments. Mr. Sue, is your hand still up? Are you speaking on this still or can we go to a vote? No, I need to uh, review this. Um, okay. Chair, I'm just reviewing it. We're just reading it now. We just got it. So we're taking some time. So if we can just have a moment and we'll take okay, it through. I will do 60 seconds maximum. It's not a lot of changes, so we should get to it, please. Mr. Backrack, uh, do you wish to speak on it while it's being reviewed? And we'll get back to Mr. Sousa. Sure. My only comment, Mr. Chair, is just that some of the sentence structure reads a little bit funny, particularly with regard to the reference to officials, um, sort of added in at the end. And the words each appear twice, or the word each appears twice. To each appear separately for one hour and a half each. Um, but I don't want to, you know, outstay my welcome by wordsmithing. <laughs> I'm, I'm just ho I'm, I'm hopeful. It is, it, is, it is written as it had been adopted, but I think um, I understand what you're saying, and we'll we'll make sure we're clear on the intent of it. I'm just hoping that the intent comes across, and yes. I'm I'm unclear reading it how the Point officials order, sure. fit into this. Yeah, hold on, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chair, sure, Point of order. order. Oh, sorry. I've been trying for a minute, and it, I have having a, a technical issue. Um, but, but, Chair, uh, the the version that was distributed was not what I said in my amendment. Uh, I, I said uh, to uh, each appear separately. So I, I think I was quite clear on that. I said put the word each before appear, and then separately after the word appear. So, and I think that will address Mr. Backrack's issue as well. That's so, what we um, received from your staff, Mr. Genus. Sorry, what? That is what I, the I, clerk I said, received from your staff. I didn't. I didn't provide written notice of, of that. I said to each appear separately was what I what I said on the record when I moved the. That is what uh, your staff apparently provided to the clerk, and the clerk made the adjustments. Can you perhaps you. go back to your? Sure, staff? I, I moved an amendment verbally, and I was clear about the what I said. So, uh, and that and the, and the transcript will make that clear. And no, and no, no text was was. Yes, so. it, it, the clerk did not just pull it out of the air, Mr. Genuis. If he tells me, is, unless he's mistaken, inform me that the text that was sent out came from your staff. I understand what you're saying, but perhaps you need to confirm with your staff what was sent over to okay. the clerk. Okay. And and, and perhaps my staff made it made an error, and I apologize if the staff sent something after the fact to the clerk uh, by email in error. Uh, but I, 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 um, I mean, I think I, I moved an amendment verbally, and that was and that should be reflected. Thank you. Okay, why don't we move to Mr. D'Souza. Why don't you draft something to ensure that the clerk has the right version and then we can resend it back out. Mr. Anthony, I see you're back. We're going to be a short while longer, I am assuming, so you're welcome to disengage again, Mr. Anthony. Mr. Souza, did you wish to, you know, why don't we wait a few minutes? We'll get the correct version. And we will redistribute it, but we will suspend again for five minutes. Two minutes. Five minutes.
uh, by email and error. I guess you send it back out. Mr. Anthony, I see you're back. We're going to be a short while longer, I'm assuming, so you're welcome to disengage again, Mr. Anthony. Mr. Souza, did you wish to... You know, why don't we wait a few minutes? We'll get the correct version, and we will redistribute it, but we will suspend again for... Five minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes this play out. Will this be the final or is there an opportunity for us to end up? The amendment now is proceeding. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the amendment now is received. I've been trying to read it through. Once this is initiated, we go back to the original or does this play out? Will this be the final or is there an opportunity for us to end up to revise it? We're on the, we're on Mr. Genuis's amendment. And mm -hmm. why don't I just have the clerk read it back in for the record, because there's been a lot of back and forth. But we're on the uh, Mr. Genuis's Mr. amendment. That's what we're debating, and we're trying to move forward on. I'll have the uh, clerk just read it back into the record, and we will move forward if there's anyone else in the speaking lesson. Hopefully we can vote on it. The motion as it stands reads as follows that the committee invites the President of the Treasury Board, the Minister of Public Service and Procurement Canada, and the President, Canada Border Services Agency, Aaron O'Gorman, to each appear separately for one and a half hours. We'll remove the word each, that is again redundant, that can be removed, as well as officials regarding the 2023-2024 Supplementary Estimates C, and that the meeting will take place on Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. Perfect. I see no one else in the speaking list. Can we help oh, Mr. Souza? Yeah, so it's rather unprecedented that we're going to have, look, we're trying to combine them, provide for that, and provide the extra um, extended time. But now the way the amendment reads and what we're doing is providing not only the ministers, and now we've included officials and others to appear for a longer period of time. The initial intent was to enable us to expedite and facilitate the meeting, what we're doing is ex extending ministers' time, extending and including now outside officials that normally would not be part of it. And I think that's the part that we're having more difficulty with as we go forward. So what happens next, Mr. Chair? Is it possible to make amendments at this point? We're debating the amendment, so we'd have to move forward to that. Are you suggesting perhaps that we do... And I'm going to gonna stick my f nose in here. That, are you suggesting we go back to the traditional for the SUPs of one hour minister and then the second hour with the officials? Separate well, I'm suggesting we just combine them and extend the time so we can expedite it. That's what my, I prefer to go Extend back the time as in a three-hour meeting, Mr. Sousa? No, no. And no, I, sorry cool. for I'm I, just trying to work out so we can move forward. Yeah. You're suggesting so like a I, I'm, my question is, as a result, as, as a consequence of what's being amended now, it's tr extension of time is now throughout the system with inclusion of others. So what happens after this amendment? If it gets voted down, what happens then? If it gets voted or if it's if, it gets, it's if this passed. amendment gets voted down, we're, then we're back to the original amended motion, which was yours with Mrs. Uh, Bignola's amendment. And if it gets so if it passes, it passes. And that's that. If what so we're going to be requesting. Amendment? Are yes. you talking about if Mr. Garnett's amendment passes? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Then if it passes, then we go back, to, then that becomes the amended motion and we vote on the amended motion. So, and then we can make amendments to that motion at that point. Because again, my concern is we're actually now extending the time extensively uh, for, for the ministers and for others from outside, who it's, it's unconventional yeah. to have outside yeah, members. We yeah, just yeah. just to be clear, we cannot reamend uh, the sub amendment. Like for example, we can't go back and have a uh, amendment to remove Miss O'Gorman. So we cannot change that once it's been accepted. So Mr. Genuis says, if it was accepted, it'd be the as it is. We can't go back and change that. 
the specific things Mr. Generous put in, nor the specific things that uh, Mrs. Vignola put in. Right. And our initial engagement was to engage more, and I think that was part of the friendly amendment by Mrs. Vignola, uh, to accommodate some of those requests. So if this proceeds and it passes, um, then we cannot go back. This is it. We don't have another opportunity to amend. Well, you can amend, but you cannot. You wouldn't be able to take away, for example, the Mrs. Vignola's amendment that we accepted of having Ms. O'Gorman no. here. If, for example, we did pass it, though, and, you know, the ministers were only available for one hour, and then perhaps one of them said, well, I can only do one hour on a separate day, and that just kind of happen, happenstance happens to be what we've normally done for the SUPs, such as life. If you get what I'm saying. But no, if we pass this amendment, then it is as with the CBSA, we cannot change that, nor with um, the items that Mr. Genuas has changed. You could propose something else, such as adding another department or you know, adding more time to the meeting, but not to change what we've agreed upon. I see Mrs. Vignola hands up. Go ahead, Mrs. Vignola. Mr. President, Mr. Chair, um, I'm asking uh, a question out of naivety, maybe. Will it be appropriate for the amendment and the main motion be friend be withdrawn in a friendly way by those who tabled it? so that we proceed with the adjustment as usual. Is this an option? Is this a possible consensus? Or are our hands tied? For example, if Mr. Souza wishes to withdraw this motion entirely and leave it to the chair to book one hour with one minister, and a second hour of the second minister with their officials for the SUPs, as we've done in the past, we could do it on UC. I see no one else for speaking list, so why don't we tend to the vote for Mr. Genus's amendment. The vote is on the amendment by Mr. Genuis to remove the main estimates 2024-2025 and their respective departmental plans. Ms. Sidhu. No. Mr. Baines. No. Mr. Jahari. Against. Mr. May. Against. Mr. Souza. No. Ms. Block. Yay. Mr. Genovus. Yes. Mr. Brock. Yes. Madame Vignola. Oui. Mr. Backrack. Yes. It's five, five, sir. Um, I vote yes as well. Carried. So. His motion as amended. Yeah, we're now back to Mr. Souza's motion as amended with Mr. Genesis's amendment and Madame Bignola's amendment having been accepted. Mr. Souza? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to, um, I don't know if I can amend my own amendment now, my own motion, uh, to reduce it now to 60 minutes. Uh, no. Uh, my colleagues? <laughs> I, I refer to okay, the vice chair. Okay, giving up the floor to uh, someone else? Mr. I give up the floor to, to the vice chair. Uh, Mr. Jawari. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move an amendment uh, to that motion that we limit the appearance of the ministers to one hour only. Are you suggesting one hour side by side or one hour than one hour? Um, 
at this point looks like it's going to be one hour and one hour we, because the one hour side by side, we had offered one and a half hours side by side, but it was not accepted if, if I'm unless not following properly. Mr. May, you're going to speak on uh, Mr. Jari's amendment, which is simply to change it from 95 minutes to I, 60 minutes. I, I actually, have a, actually have a point of order, Mr. Chair, and I just yeah. I didn't want to interrupt my colleague. Um, Free to. You, the, <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, you, had, you had suggested that that, that uh, my colleague uh, Mr. Souza could not amend his own amendment, but it was um, the, his amend or excuse me, not amend his own motion, um, but his motion was amended. So I, I just want to get clarity from the clerk that that Ms., Mr. Souza has the privilege to to move an amendment at this point. Um, I, I, I stand to be corrected on that, and I I, I just would very much like to to know if that's uh, the case. Yeah, I can pass over to the clerk or I can just tell you that that is the, the case because it's in his, so even it's in his motion. It's was, in his name is the issue. I, I understand, but his motion was amended um, several, yes. a couple times. Yeah, it's still his motion um, though. We, we, or excuse me, his motion was amended a couple of times and uh, he, he does not have the right to then move a, an amendment on that motion. Is that correct? Well, you won't you won't listen to me, so I'll hand it over to clerk to tell you the same thing. That is my understanding, sir. If you'd like me to double check that, I can on your behalf. Uh, at this point, we do have an amendment to put forward by Mr. Jahari, but certainly to clear the record, I don't mind going back and checking that for you, sir, if you like. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Thank you. So, let's sum up beside the point because we do have Mr. Jahari actually put through the amendment that I assume Mr. Souza did. Is anyone else on the speaking list on Mr. Jari's amendment to change it to one hour with the assumption being not side by side, but one hour the one hour? Perfect. We can move to a vote on that, on Mr. Jari's amendment. Perfect. We'll do a recorded vote. The vote is on the amendment put forward by Mr. Jahari. Ms. Sidhu? Yes. Mr. Baines? Yes. Mr. Jahari? Yes. Mr. May? Yes. Mr. Souza? Yes. Ms. Block? No. Mr. Genemus? No. Mr. Brock? No. Madame Bignola? Vive les compromis. Oui. Mr. Backrack? Yes. Seven to three, sir. Adopted. So that's adopted. Seven to three. Can we now vote on the amended, amended, amended original motion from Mr. Sousa? Okay, we'll go to recorded vote. I'll uh, give you uh, a 30 second warning, Mr. Anthony. We will get back to you very shortly if you want to come back online. Go ahead, sir. The question is on the main motion put forward by Mr. Souza, now amended. Ms. Sidhu? Yes. Mr. Baines? Yes. Mr. Jahari? Yes. Mr. May? Yes. Mr. Souza? Thumbs up for Mr. Souza. Ms. Block? Yes, yes, sorry, it's off. Yes. Thank you, sir. Ms. Block? No. Mr. Genesis? No. Mr. Brock? No. Madame Vignola? Right. Mr. Backrack? No. Six, four, yes. Okay, six, four. So it is carried. Um, leave it with me and the clerk, and I think uh, Mr. Jawari as vice chair to figure out who will be at uh, what time, if that's fine with everyone. Thanks very much. Uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, that's Mr. Bertold, go ahead, sir. Merci, Monsieur le Président. 
Mr. Chair, is my sound okay? Mr. Anthony, you and your partner, Mr. Firth, found a perfect recipe to enrich yourself on the back of Canadians without employees and all that, and without the laxism, and without the laxism of the Liberal government asking for accountability. Mr. Chair, could the MP please repeat? The interpreter missed the last part of the question. Uh, your question, Mr. Bateau? All the question. Please, just start from the beginning. I'll reset your time. Okay, merci. Monsieur Anthony. Mr. Anthony, you and your partner, Mr. Firth, seems to have found the perfect recipe to enrich yourself on the backs of Canadians without technical knowledge, without employees, without Mr. Trudeau's, and with the laxism of the Liberal government opening you the doors. Is there anyone from the Liberal government who questioned your business model since 2015? No. It's not, very it's not very surprising. According to the figures we have, Mr. Anthony, even the Auditor General cannot confirm the figures because of the lack of details on the invoices, the fact that Mr. Firth is calling everyone talking about these liars, your numbered company and yourself could have earned millions of dollars since 2015 in contracts. Is that correct? Um, I'm not sure what you're what you're referencing. Combien d'argent avez-vous? How much money did you earn from federal contracts since 2015? You and your numbered company. I, I don't have that information with me right now. Monsieur, Monsieur, Monsieur Anthony. Mr. Anthony, an ordinary Canadian earning, having millions of dollars entering into an account, can see whether it's four million, five million, five hundred thousand. It seems to be pennies for you, but for many people, lining up on the food banks is a lot of money. So the figures we are giving you between four and five million. Is that the profit that you personally earned from the contracts? Again, I don't have those numbers in front of me. Vous pouvez pas dire. You cannot say. Mr. Anthony, you cannot tell us whether you earned more than $4 million from federal contracts since 2015. You can't tell us that. No. Plus de 5 million? More than 5 million? I don't have those numbers in front of me. Plus de 6 million? 6 million? I don't have those numbers in front of me. Plus de 7 million, Monsieur Anthony? More than 7 million? I don't have those numbers in front of me. Plus de 8 million, Monsieur Anthony? More than 8 million, Mr. Anthony? I don't have any numbers in front of me. Donc, vous ne pouvez même pas nous dire even tell us how many million dollars you earned from Canadian tax payers since you set up your company. Mr. Anthony, you were very greedy. I believe your business model has shown this to us very clearly. You came up with a formula and you decided you made a lot of money and you claim not to have read the AG's report. You should be ashamed, Mr. Anthony. Have you out, Are you ashamed that you are not able to tell Canadians how much you earned from Canadian taxpayers using your business model that involves making a lot of money without any technical knowledge? No. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Chair. Nothing else for this witness. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bertold. Uh, next, I have uh, some from the Liberals, but I don't have the speaking order. Sorry, who's uh, who's up next with the... Oh, Mr. Baines, do you have a point of order, sir? It's my turn, I believe. Are you going to go? Perfect. Thanks very much. Go ahead, Mr. Baines. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, I'm just going to try to add some clarity to what I 
feel like we've learned over the last little while here. So um, we learned, I, I, we, I asked Mr. Firth yesterday about uh, whether this process of how the industry operates and how uh, contracts are procured and and you talked about being in uh, working in 2005 he indicated that his earliest uh, work with government was 2007 and and he said that the process has not changed since then which, to which i was surprised into mr Bertold's question about if anybody asked um did anybody ask uh, uh, do, do you feel the same way that the process has not changed since your time, 2005 to now? The process, I believe, has been in place since 2003. So 2003, even before yeah. you got there. So you're ultimately playing within the rules that have been set and and they have not changed since 2003. Uh, they would have changed a, in a small bit with the number of vendors in certain, let's say, a tier one RFP. Um, at one point, there used to be five vendors invited. Now it's a minimum of minimum of fifteen. So yeah, that could simply be because of the the um, the scope of the work has increased, etc. And there's more uh, work required at, at this time, right? Is that safe to say? Yes, it could be for a number of reasons. Okay, so, and you, you fall, you're being the security officer. I'm just going to go through the steps. There's secu security requirements checklist. And then there's a uh, document, um, the safeguarding, then there's facility security. Um, and all of those steps are then signed off by whom? Well, if you have those requirements, Once you've submitted they, them. Who signs those off? Uh, PSPC. So, so public official, somebody in the bureaucracy. Yes. How many of how many people sign those off? Um, I think there's a team of people there. I have numerous. Is it supposed names. to be four, or do you know the, the rules around that? Is it supposed to be four? I have no idea. So you, you, I, okay. So let's just say some. Somebody signs those, what you've submitted, wherever, over the portal. Yep. Somebody has to sign those off, yep. and it's public officials. Do you get a response from somebody? I do. Who is that? It would be, I don't have the name in front of me. I, I'm happy to go through my emails and send yeah, you Yeah, if you could please uh, submit who signs those, the, which public officials sign off what you submit. Um, I'm just going to go into ultimately what I've sort of seen is like we were uh, there's a lot of relationships here you know the folks at Cordix you know the folks at Dalian you know others and you're a recruiter you said you're a recruiter everyone out there seems to be uh, sort of sharing uh, there's subcontractors who probably work uh, across other uh, companies is that true uh, yes, that's true. Subcontractors, subcontractors are free to work who, with whomever they want. Okay, so now you got public officials signing off. There's a whole industry of people like yourself, and you have uh, all these subcontractors who probably over time um, become known, and everybody knows who's who. You know, and and that, this sort of brings me back to everybody working. Everybody knows the system. It's been the same since 2003, has not changed. So is in a way, could would it be accurate to say everybody's colluding together to to do this and and whether it's the, what the price limits are and all of those things, does everybody sort of have the same pricing and and there's so no. much work there's so much work to go around that doesn't matter. Everybody can pick and choose. Uh, whoever's not working on something, hey, why don't you go here? Is everybody that's, talking to one another? That's our time, Mr. Bino. Yes no. Are you able to offer a quick answer? No. No. Okay. Thanks very much. Mrs. Vignola, please, for two and a half. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Chair. Let me come back to the procedural aspect. 
the work of GC strategies on Arifkan, was it uh, supervised, verified, and approved by the competent authorities? And I'm talking about the border services. Uh, I don't have that information. Vous personnel. You personally, be it the border services as part of the ArriveCan contract, who supervised you from C the CBSC? Who asked you questions? I have, I have no information on that. Donc vous ne savez pas. So you do not know whether anyone asked you questions about your work on ArriveCan? <clears throat> Very well. Ok, merci. Pers donc personne. So no one questioned you. Yes, I'm asking questions to try to understand how GC strategies work, how numbered companies function, the numbered companies that you own. But I'm trying to understand as well how we lose control of management of public funds and taxes of Canadians. And where do those taxes go? The money that was received from GC strategies was some of it, did some of it go to subcontractors and did some of it go into your pockets? Well, the one that you pocketed, is it still in Canada? I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're referring to with with which one have you pocketed. The profits. I'm talking about the profits that you earned. Are they still in Canada or were they sent elsewhere to some uh, foreign companies or foreign trust? Is that money still in Canada? Everything is still in Canada. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Backrack for two and a half, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Anthony, how did you respond to the news that the government had banned your company from all government contracts? I was very upset. And what steps did you take after receiving that news? We've taken no steps so far. Did you meet with your business partner to discuss the uh, the suspension of government contracts i i let i made him aware that we were no longer able to do business with the federal government so this news this news was communicated to you and then you communicated it to mr firth yes i received the email and that was prior to having your security status uh suspended yes the notification came in on february the 14th and I believe our security was suspended on March the 1st. And after uh, having your contract suspended, did you meet with uh, Mr. Firth to determine the best course of action for your company? Uh, we, we had discussed what our steps would be going forward, but we didn't really get into detail as we, we have been focusing on these committed meetings and did you communicate with the government after learning that uh that your contracts had been suspended uh, i communicated with the departments that have reached out to me to send us documents to sign off on contracts that were existing to let our resources know they were no longer able to work and what was the substance of those conversations with the departments that you communicated with? Uh, they would just say they signed a, a amendment to a contract that the contract was on hold or terminated. And did you or Mr. Firth appeal in any way this decision by the government to suspend all your contracts? Both you and Mr. Firth uh, have asserted to the committee that you've done nothing wrong and all of a sudden the government takes away all your business. Did, did you appeal that decision? Not yet. Do you intend to? 
Thanks, Mr. Chair. Sorry, go ahead and answer, Mr. Anthony. Maybe. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Sousa, now please, for five minutes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Anthony, did you um, did you know or have you ever met Mr. McDonald or Mr. Otano? No, I have not. You've never spoken to them? Nope. You never participated in any meetings? If that's the case, okay. Um, and uh, do you know the principles of Butler AI? Did you ever meet with them? No, I've never met with them. The only interaction I've had with Bottler has been security. So what did you do in regards to providing clearance of security or what did you do in that case with those two individuals? And, and those, those two individuals reached out to me asking how to get security cleared with the federal government. I gave them the instructions around they needed to get fingerprinting. Uh, I found a place in Montreal, that's where they were residing at the time, uh, that does federal fingerprinting, Pro got them through that process. They sent me back their documents with the DCN numbers on it. They sent me their date of births and their citizenships. I submitted that through the oldest portal, and they they were able to get security cleared. So you facilitated their engagement. Uh, now, they didn't have a contract. Is that correct? Like, why did they need security clearance? What exactly was taking place? I, I have no knowledge of that. So who instructed you to provide the requirements for fingerprinting and, and security engagement? Like, how did that come to be? I, be I believe they, they reached out to me to say they needed the security clearance. So the two principals reached out to you. So this would have been Mr. Amir Maurer and, and Rakita Dud, Dud? They yes. contact they so they reached out to you. I believe so, yes. And their request was, hey, we need clearance in order to do, engage with the federal government. Yes. Without a contract. Now without a contract. At that time you were able to do that. You were able to, the, to start the process. You can if you have a, if you're submitting a bid on an RFP that you're not awarded, there's a, there could be a number or an identifier associated with that. But prior, prior to a few years ago, you would be able to submit a name for security clearance and say that they were just a consultant and they would be able to get a clearance. And Mr. Firth had been in contact with them as well, concurrent with you, with their engagement? Uh, I don't have any knowledge of his contact with Bottler. Okay. So Bottler is the one that contacted you to get uh, matters for their security. And no contract was evident. They were proposing, they were going through a preliminary study, pilot, whatever it was called. And that's why they needed this clearance, which you facilitated them to get. Yeah, I would assume so. Um, and you being an owner of DC Strategies, a major owner, half half of 50% owner, didn't have a contract with the government regarding their engagement either. Is that correct? That's correct. So DC Strategy doesn't have a contract, Bottler doesn't have a contract, so you're facilitating security clearance for them to potentially get a contract. Uh, yes. <clears throat> and there was no RFP? There was no request for contracts because there was nothing being proposed at that point? There was no RFP, no. Are you aware of their accusations against GC Strategies and uh, how they operated relative to their conduct? I have no knowledge of that. They've disputed that GC Strategies misrepresented them in regards to their resumes or their qualifications when they dealt with, I believe, Dalian, who ultimately got the contract. Are you aware of that? No, I'm not aware of that. Are you aware of Dalian's engagement and subcontracting? Well, I guess, did Dalian subcontract GC Strategies? I have no knowledge of that. 
the Dow didn't provide funds to GC Strategies. I have no knowledge of that. Do you know if Butler got paid for their services through GC Strategies or through Dowlin? I have no knowledge of that. Thank you, Mr. Souza. Uh, colleagues, I apologize. I skipped over the uh, conservative round, so we will all go to. I was so anxious to hear from Mr. Souza. <laughs> you caught me uh, off guard, too. Yeah, sorry. So we're going to go to Mr. Brock, and then we will go to uh, Mr. Genwis and Mr. Uh, Shawari to finish. And then uh, the Block NDP. Go ahead, Mr. Brock. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Anthony, do you currently have, or have you had in the past, any relatives working with uh, the government of Canada? No. All right. Uh, you'd agree with me, sir. I'm going to ask you a number of uh, rapid-fire questions. You'd agree with me, sir, that Christian Firth really is the sole public face of Government of Canada strategies? No. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, Mr. Souza. I don't believe it's called Government of Canada GC Strategies. Order. I think that's the name no. of the company. Yeah, we've, already, a, we've already resolved that. Yeah, it's that. not a point of order, uh, Mr. Sousa, but thanks. Mr. Brock, continue, sir. Um, are you a public face? Uh, I might be now. <laughs> you probably are. Yeah, uh, that, that's, a, that's a good observation. But you'd agree with me that uh, Mr. Firth was front and center during the rollout of the Arrive Scam app over the last several years. It wasn't you, it was Mr. Firth, correct? He, he was the face for Arrive yes, Scam, yes. Yes, he was the one that held all the relationships with the bureaucrats and government officials such as deputy ministers and ministers, not you, correct? I don't have any knowledge of that. He was the one that was whining and dining uh, potential contractors with government officials. That wasn't you, correct? That wasn't me. No. Literally everything to do with the Arrive Can scam was flowed directly through Christian Firth. It had no DNA of you on it. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I was not involved. Right. So we heard yesterday from Christian Firth that, uh, not only yesterday, but in previous testimony, that he's quite proud of the Arrive Can scam. Are you equally proud? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm proud of the work that, that we were able to deliver. Are you proud of the end result? Which end result are you referring to? The end result that resulted in um, extremely long delays at the borders, chaos and confusion at airports, the faulty, glitchy part of the app that resulted in the illegal detention of 10,000 Canadians. Are you proud of those facts, Mr. Anthony? Yes or no? I have no, I have no knowledge of that. Come on, Mr. Anthony. You read papers. You watch the news. Were you living under a rock for the last three years? Did you not experience the frustrations that millions of Canadians had at airports, border crossings? You want this committee to believe this lie that you have no knowledge of those basic facts? Come on. No one believes you. I certainly don't believe you. Do you think Canadians got value for their money for the Arrive Can scam? We were asked to do a job for a price, and we did it. A price that was originally estimated at $80,000 that was multiplied 750 times to around $60 million. Is that, sir, value for the money? I have no knowledge of that. Of course you don't. 
you were completely unable to answer relevant questions from numerous members of this committee. Will you ultimately answer questions that are put to you by the RCMP? If the RCMP reaches out, I will cooperate with them. Thank you. Those are my questions, Chair. Thank you. Uh, we now go to back to regular order. Mr. Uh, Genuis, please, for five. And then Mr. Joari, and then Mrs. Vignola, and Mr. Backrack. Go ahead, Mr. Genuis. Uh, thank you. Chair, uh, Mr. Mr. Anthony, uh, Bottler executives have uh, testified that Christian Firth, your partner, bragged about having dirt on his friends uh, who were senior government uh, contracting officials. Uh, has Mr. Firth ever uh, told you that he has dirt on anyone? No. Does Mr. Firth have any dirt on you? No. And you're nonetheless uh, prepared to continue to defend him in spite of everything you've heard today? Yes. Uh, do you intend to read the Auditor General's report after this meeting's over? No. Why not? Is it... The damage has already been done for me. It, it does not affect me. Sir, you, you, you began your opening statement by talking about how much it affected you. Anyway, we, we, we've been over this ground uh, before. Uh, Mr. Anthony, uh, one of my uh, colleagues had been asking you about uh, meetings with uh, Mr. Firth. Uh, did, you, did you discuss your testimony today with Mr. Firth? No. Did he participate in any uh, of your preparations? preparatory activities no okay uh you you did say and the record will show that in response to questions from mr backrack uh you said you you were um uh in terms of of time spent uh on responding to the the suspension you said uh you hadn't discussed it because you were focused on these committee meetings did you not say that i did say that Okay, so, so you, you, you just admitted to me that in your discussions with Mr. Firth, you were focused on these committee meetings. At the same time, 30 seconds no, previously... No, no that's, not, that's not what I meant when I said that. Well, what, what, what I, did, did you I, I, had, I had no discussions with Mr. Firth about this committee meeting. When Mr. Okay, but, you, but, you were, but you were nonetheless focused on the committee meetings and your discussions with him. No, I did not say that. All right, sir. I think there. I think the record will show that you you said many things that you didn't say, uh, and uh, I hope you uh, uh, do actually read the Auditor General's report, which you no doubt have already read, um, Mr. Chair. I, uh, in light of the previous discussions about security and privacy issues uh, raised by Mr. Uh, Anthony's testimony, I'd let now like to move a motion. The motion is that the committee report to the House that in light of the evidence of Darren Anthony, Chief Security Officer for GC Strategies, that he did not vet or review, arrive can subcontracts awarded by GC Strategies. And given that the Auditor General found, quote, some resources that were involved in the security assessments were not identified in the task authorizations and did not have security clearance uh, as submitted by GC Strategies, and that the Canadian Border Services Agency, quote, was unable to provide any uh, supporting documentation to confirm that work related to the security assessments were performed by four of the five resources listed, end quote. The committee called upon the Privacy Commissioner to, to conduct an investigation of the ArriveCAN app, including the work of all contractors and subcontractors, and determine whether the privacy and personal information of Canadians was adequately protected, and with a view to presenting a special report uh, to Parliament. Uh, that motion uh, has been sent, I believe has been uh, distributed. And uh, I think it's uh, it's fairly self-explanatory, uh, Chair. The testimony today. Let, let me uh, just raises... interrupt you quickly. Sure. It has been sent to everyone in both languages to the P9s. Go ahead, Mr. Genos. Sorry. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I I think it's it's clear from the testimony today uh, that the person responsible for uh, security uh, at GC Strategies 
uh, was not attending to and is not able to answer questions about uh, about key measures that should have been in place to protect the privacy and security of Canadians. Uh, therefore, I, I uh, believe this motion will and should uh, receive the uh, the quick support of this committee, uh, and we can ask the privacy commissioner to undertake uh, this important work. Um, there, there have been a number of different investigations in relation to the ArriveCan uh, app, of course, uh, but this is a, a unique element. Uh, the implications for the privacy and security of Canadians' data, uh, so many Canadians uh, put their personal data into this app expecting that it would be protected, uh, and I think we now need to ask the Privacy Commissioner to investigate the serious uh, problems that we've heard about today. Thank you. I assume everyone has received it. Mr. Sousa and then Mr. Shawari. Mr. Chair, I ask for a uh, uh, suspension for 10 minutes to go re to review this, please. Jory, was that the same issue for yourself or did you wish to speak on this? So are you, uh, Mr. Chair, are you talking to me? Yeah, your hand is up. Did you, were, yeah. were you yeah. on the I, same I like, issue to uh, ask no. for a short suspension? Uh, yeah, ask for it for, uh, for a 10 minute suspension. Okay, uh, why don't we do five minutes? We'll come back and at a quarter to three. We're suspended for five. <laughs> Colleagues, if you can come back in, please. We are returning, please. Oh. Thank you. Are we ready to move ahead uh, on this, Mr. Jawari? Uh, Mr. Chair, in the interest of time and the fact that we've now asked the witness uh, to wait uh, a couple of times, can we can we proceed with the next round of question, i.e., the Liberals, uh, the Bloc? as well as NDP, and then dismiss uh, uh, Mr. Anthony and then go back to this motion, uh, because uh, otherwise uh, we're going to run out of time and we're going to lose the, we're going to lose the, um, uh, our, our, our support translation. Um, well, we can, you can put forward to adjourn debate on the motion. Otherwise, Chair, just a point, a point, point of order. What's the timeline uh, in terms of of, uh, of resources? To about three o'clock. Then we lose our interpreters, and then uh, also we may end up losing Mr. Anthony at three o'clock. Although that's certainly not our intention. Are we are we able to resume uh, with further interpretation, or I uh, will require um, one moment. Yeah, probably about a. Uh, 10, 15 minute break. Okay, so we could resume. My, my suggestion, the simplest thing is just we adopt this motion quickly and then we, uh, then we can get back to the testimony. Uh, that'd be what I suggest. Okay. Mr. Jouari? Uh, Mr. Chair, we are not ready to adopt this motion. There, 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 the, the logic of uh, asking uh, for an investigation is based on uh, Mr. Anthony not reading an AG report, et cetera, et cetera, which, which it, it, uh, it, uh, okay, sorry, sure, Mr. it's fair Mr. for Mr. us Shari. to be able to, I'm sorry, yeah. let me interrupt. I, I, I see where this is going. I'm going to suggest if it's fine with everyone, uh, that we release, uh, Mr. Anthony, he's been with us our past we're expected and we're going to lose re, you know, lose interpreters, et cetera. Anyway, so if everyone's fine, I'm going to release Mr. Anthony. Yes. We're good. Uh, I have I have a round of questions for Mr. Anthony still, sir. Okay. Well, can continue then, and uh, we'll see where we sit in ten minutes. Go ahead, Mr. Jawari, with your on Mr. Generous's motion. Yes, um, I, I think it, for, for us it leaves room for interpretation, and then we just want to take the time uh, to be able to look at the underlying reason and what the implication of that is. Therefore, we, we can either um, suspend uh, this motion and go and finish the testimony from Mr. Anthony and come back to it, or or we can come back to that motion uh, um, uh, on on Monday. Thank you.
Thanks. Actually, I found out it's going to be a 30 minute wait for the, uh, the pause for the bringing the new interpreter team. Mr. Sousa, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, we, we do. Um, I think we will have some amendments to, to the motion, and I, I agree. Let's uh, allow uh, the ongoing questions with uh, the witness and then return to this later today or, or on Monday. As a committee, you can agree unanimously. Yeah, thanks. And I understand what you're saying, but we do require either a dilatory motion, such as uh, move to the next order of business to adjourn the debate on this motion, or a UC to do so. Yeah, so I move for motion to adjourn debate. Thanks. We will go to a vote on that, sir. The question is to adjourn debate on the motion in the name of Mr. Genuis. Ms. Sidhu? Yes. Mr. Baines? Yes. Mr. Jahari? Yes. Mr. Ali? In favor. Mr. Souza? Yes. Mr. Barrett? Nay. Mr. Genuis? No. Mr. Brock? No. Madame Vignola? No. Mr. Backrack? No. Uh, no. We'll continue with the debate. I see no one on the speaking list. Can we move to a vote then? No, Mr. Souza. Yeah, we, um, we, well, I don't think it's, a, I don't know if that's appropriate or if it's uh, allowed that we can actually call upon or demand the privacy commissioner to actually uh, do the investigation or conduct the investigation. I believe that's, they're independent. I mean, we certainly would have to, uh, request of them to do so. Um, and I would like uh, the opportunity to, and that's why I was asking for an adjournment of debate, because we do want to amend uh, the motion in order to make it more palatable and equitable in terms of how we proceed forward on this issue. So um, I'm just waiting for that amendment to come my way in, reg in regards to uh, supporting uh, the motion with a proper uh, uh, wording is that, is that how we proceed because I don't believe you can actually call upon them or or force them to do something to this effect anyone else on the speaking list um, I, Mr. Souza if you're going to speak, speak yeah but yeah, yeah let me let me if I may move uh, uh, a ration to change the uh, the amendment, here's an amendment if I can, and can I just read it forward? Yeah, do you have any writing as well to share, or is it just I'll, written? I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get the team to proceed to do so, but I'll read it forward. Go ahead. This, again, it's, 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 it, I'm just trying to respect the commissioner's ability, right, uh, to judge the merits of the issues independently outside of us, and uh, we don't want to make this an order, per se, only recognizing the independence and the arm's-length nature of which they pursue. So I would like to add... An amendment to say, and that pursuant to Standing Order 109, the government table, a comprehensive response in regards to this, and that we request the Re Privacy Commission to conduct uh, the investigation. I'll get it out to you um, in writing. Go ahead, Mr. Genuis, but just just to um, on They're the sending it to you now. Yeah, on the amendment, it sounds you yeah, it sounds like you're changing it to uh, requests instead of calls on, and you're adding a response from the government. But otherwise, correct. staying the same. If I understand that correct, Mr. Genuis, uh, go That's ahead correct. on the uh, amendment. Okay, the 
Uh, so just briefly, the, the government response piece is obviously ridiculous. I don't think it even needs to be dignified with a response. Um, the the uh, um, changing calls upon to requests uh, seems like a distinction without a difference. Uh, so um, if it helps us move along, uh, um, I would maybe see if there's unanimous consent of the committee to adopt the one part, but not the other part of Mr. Uh, Sousa's motion and adopt the motion. Do we have UC for that? Mr. Sousa? Oh, I see someone, I see NDP, yes. I see Mr. Jari shaking his head. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, no, so I put forward amendments to the motion as I read them, and, uh, and that's where we stand at this point. Okay, Mr. Generous. Okay, I'll just I'll just move a sub uh, amendment to take out the the reference to a government response. We're we're asking the privacy commissioner to do something uh, like <laughs> asking for a government response when we've asked the privacy commissioner to do something doesn't make any sense. We, we're asking to, for the, the feedback of the privacy commissioner. So I, again, I don't think it needs much comment. Uh, uh, this, well, you know, that's the sub. I mean. Okay, seeing no one on the speaking list, we can move to a vote on that. Mr. Clerk. Mr. Chair, can you read what we're actually voting on, please? <laughs> Mr. Barrett's taking over as clerk, but yes. So the question would be on the motion uh, to be amended to replace the words calls upon with request but to remove the proposed uh, comprehensive, that a comprehensive uh, response from the government pursuant to 109 be requested. So the sub-amendment would retain the change from calls upon to request, but would remove from the proposed amendment the text concerning requesting a government response. So the question is on the sub-amendment put forward by Mr. Genuis. Ms. Sidhu? Um, what yes to uh, uh, to our Sousa, but no to amendment, but yes. This is on the sub-amendment, um, thank you. So yes. The question is on the sub-amendment, the answer is yes. Mr. Baines? Sorry, I need to clar clarify that. Yeah. The, the, the sub-amendment, this is Mr. Genuis's sub-amendment, correct? This is a vote on the sub-amendment. No. No. So, Mr. Chair, no to the to the Mr. Garner's amendment. She would need UC. Uh, um, you voted Mr. yes to this. Sorry, let me. Uh, you voted yes to the sub amendment. It would re the rules require a UC to change your vote. Do we have UC for Ms. Sidhu to change your vote? No. No. I say no. Yes. Or I, I don't say no. Sorry, I see a no. Uh, continuing with the vote, sir. Point of order, Mr. This Chair. Is, There's some. Con no, there's no, there I'm sorry, Mr. Souza, we're in a vote. There's no, the clerk defined it, I defined it, it's on Mr. Genesis' sub-amendment. And I apologize uh, if people aren't following along, but we're in the middle of the vote and we're going to continue with the vote. Sorry. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I said no to Mr. Garner's uh, uh, Amendment, sub amendment, and yes to uh, Mr. Sousa's amendment. If you can just listen to back again, that's what I said. Do you want to dress up? You want to call him to Toronto? No, uh, the, the clerk and myself, very, you know, and the clerk reiterated on the sub amendment, and you said yes. And it requires, Chair, a, we're in the middle of a vote and requires a UC to change that. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chair, if you see, I, I want to do the clarification too. I said yes to uh, Mr. Sousa's uh, mission and no to Gardner's uh, mission. That's why I said with that. And we asked and, and we I specified on the sub-amendment and you stated yes. I was thinking Mr. Sousa's amendment. That's what I said yes. And we clarified on the sub-amendment which is Mr. Genuis's, and you studied yes. We're going to continue with the vote. Mr. Baines. No. Mr. Jahari. 
No. Mr. Ali. No. Mr. Souza. I vote no, as did Sonia. <laughs> Mr. Barrett. Yay, as did Michael. <laughs> Mr. Genuis. Yes. Mr. Brock. Yes, as did my colleagues, Michael and Garnet. <laughs> Madame Mignola. Oui. Mr. Ba uh, Backrack. Yes. Six yeas, four nays. <laughs> and the, 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 the end where result wouldn't have changed anyway, so it would have been a, a pass. We're now on. Sorry, back to the amendment. To the amendment by Mr. Uh, Mr. Souza. Yeah, we're on the amendment of Mr. Souza now, which has been amended. Hold on just two seconds. And I'm sorry, we do have to suspend for our interpreters as they are leaving right now. We have a new team coming in in a bit, so I'm going to suspend, but I am going to miss, I am going to release Mr. Anthony. Thank you for joining us today, sir. I appreciate your patience and sticking around. I understand you have somewhere else to be right away, so we will release you, and thanks very much. We are suspended. I'll update everyone in about five or ten minutes on where we're at with our interpreters for our interpreters, but I want to thank our current ones for agreeing to continue to stay, so thank you very much for that. Colleagues, before we continue, I am going to seek UC, unanimous consent, and I think I generally have it to uh, reflect Ms. Sidhu's vote as a no, and the, the chair voting yes for the amendment, so it will be uh, five no's and six yeses if everyone's in agreement for that to it's the same outcome, but it does reflect, I think, the intent for everyone. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. We're now on the motion, and we're debating changing uh, calls upon to request. Are we ready to move on that, or does anyone wish to speak on that part of the amendment from Mr. Sousa? Can we agree, uh, you see, on that then? Perfect. And then on to the motion itself as amendment, or as, as amended. Are we, I see thumbs up, are we, I just want to be very clear, we're in agreement on that? Yes. Wonderful. So pass. Thank you sincerely for uh, the UC to address uh, the vote thing. That uh, shows Ms. Sidhu showing no in the change of the vote. Thank you for passing that. We are... Unless there's anything else, we are adjourned. Our next meeting will be Monday with our good friend, Mr. Giraud, from the Parliamentary Budget Office. If there's nothing else, thank you, everyone, for staying late. Thank you, of course, to our clerk, our analysts, and most importantly, today, our interpreters are sticking around and allow us to finish off. Thank you very much, everyone. We are adjourned.